Good evening and welcome to the penultimate round of the Tom Onslow Cole Clio series. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Hello and welcome to the penultimate round of the Tom Onslow Cold Cleo series. I'm Ryan Callan and with me once again in the booth today is Mr. Scott Woolwiss. 
Hello Ryan, hello everybody, good to be back once again and uh, yeah, as you said, Pulls are out for the Championship. We're getting close to that season finale at Knock Hill and the Championship is going to be decided there and then it looks like unless something dramatic happens in tonight's two races. Of course, Jack Keithy leads it and we'll get onto that more in a second. So it's going to be real crunch time and it's uh, a wonderful circuit that uh, I'm very released to. It's my home circuit, it is Snetterton. It is Snetterton, we're running the 200 layout here, which is closest, if you're familiar with the uh, the old uh, classic layout at Snetterton before they did the revamp a, a couple of years ago, uh, that's the closest uh, uh, kind of uh, layout that we have to the old Snetterton, but you'll certainly find out about that as we go into the race. Uh, this event, as we say, is a ninth round of ten. Oh. That's the wrong button. <laughs> they both started with the same words. It's a nice round of 10, as we say, at uh, of the Thomas Cole, Cole Cleo series. It's two races, 19 laps for each race. Two qualifying sessions also to decide the grid for each race. So uh, we've got a feast of action, a couple of hours of action here for you today to uh, sink, your, uh, sink your teeth into. And uh, just on the, on the subject of that championship that you were talking about, uh, uh, Scott, uh, Jack Keith, if things go correct, go his way uh, in this particular event, he could wrap up the championship today with 100 points in offer and is leading by 70, 72 points. That is correct, because of course it's 50 points for a win each, and of course it's uh, if you look at the championship standings, of course, how the points go down, of course, it goes it's 50 for a win and 47 for second, 45, 43, 41, 39. They go down in rows of two and then down in from 60, from 19 points down to 10. And, of course, the points go down all the way to 30th with five points. Uh, I believe we've got quite a large field for this afternoon's race, so for this evening's races. So could be seeing a lot of people fill up those points positions. But in terms of how, who stands where... As you say, it is Jack Keithy with that lead of 735 points to, to Jesper Tolborg's 663. And Tolborg is five points ahead of teammate Toby Davis. So really, THR Orange need Keithy to have a really bad couple of races today. And after speaking to him just before the race, he seems pretty confident. He's nervous, of course, because he's leading the championship and he knows what's squeaky bum time, that. as Alex Ferguson would say. Yep, he's probably firmly clenched in that clear, I'm probably fair to say. But uh, anyway... Um, yeah, Tolborg and Davis need to hope that Keithy has a nightmare weekend here. They ideally need him to not score in both races, uh, which effectively means to retire from both races. But with how Keithy's looking at the moment, looking at how he's running in practice, he is currently uh, sixth quickest at the moment with his uh, the, the best top top of the times right now is Eric Strahan. Um, but yeah. That's what needs to be happen. Alexander Larrison, who we believe is back for this race after missing out at, at least, I think it was, the past two races. He's back. No, he raced at, at, at Silverstone. In fact, he led quite a few laps there, Scott. Oh, yes, he did. Sorry, my apologies. My apologies. He, <laughs> wasn't, he wasn't there at Croft, was he? He wasn't there at Croft. Croft so, out, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, he's fourth in the standings. Five, three points ahead of Simon Kilov as well in fifth. John Monroe, not too confident about tonight. His chance tonight. He'd be happy with a top 15 at least. Uh, sixth in the standings. Then down Adam seventh ahead of Gary Lennon eighth. And then Chris Hack looking pretty quick here in the 119s. And Tom Ely rounding out the top 10. Driver standing, uh, team standings rather, and THR Orange have the lead uh, with 1,321 points into quadruple figures now with the point standings. Precision Motorsports are not too far behind with 1,254. Core Racing Lenovo are third with 800, but of course, you've got like Eric Strana doing a fantastic job, so we'll be keen to see how he gets on. Ice Cold Racing, oh, wrong team, he's Ice Cold. Ice Cold is where next draw is racing for. They're currently fourth, 653 points. Precision Motorsport 2's 604. Yeah, I'm a clock for getting those, uh, those teams around the race. Um, you know why? It's because they've both, both got a Lenovo sponsorship. That's the reason why I confused that one. Uh, uh, that, uh, indeed, that's the case. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I mean, it's interesting the championship, of course, well, with Jack having such a big lead, it's kind of a formality, isn't it, in, in many ways, but anything could go wrong, a disconnection, and he loses a potential 100 points right there. So uh, it's really not over at all, and it's, it's going to be intriguing to the last. We're about three minutes away now from uh, qualifying, and you're talking there about Eric Strahan, Scott. He is the form man in the TPS right now, isn't he? He has. Absolutely. This, this, is, this has been record in the last five races. Guys, check this out. Two third places at Oran Park, two wins at Silverstone in the... In the, in the Thomas or Cole Cleo series, Oran Park was at the V8 Supercars, and then he backed it up with the second place also in the V8 Supercars at Sandown uh, on Saturday, just four days ago. So in the last five races, he has five podiums and two wins. So he is hot stuff right now in all formats of racing, long distance racing, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, powerful, low powered. He's on absolute top form and if we go into the game now also as well you'll see he's also on top form here today Scott. 
I think it's fair to say that if we were doing fantasy tournaments like Old Fears right now, you'd certainly be picking Strike. That's one of your ideal <laughs> you picks would. For, for, for the maximum score because he's looking fantastic right now. He really has found a groove in the past few races, as you said, with that fantastic run of podiums and victories. And I, effectively, I think in some cases, you'd be probably be foolish to, in some ways, foolish to, be, to, to bet against him for taking at least. Uh, I thought uh, a strong podium finish in at least one of these races tonight, you would have thought. But of course, the big story, of course, is just how is how Jack Keith is going to fare, of course, and how much of an impact both Jesper Tolborg and Toby Davis can make, if at all, on Keithy's uh, charge as we head into these final two rounds of the championship. Now, looking at how these guys are getting on right now, Jack Keithy currently sits sixth in practice on a 119.797, and literally a thousandth of a second quicker than Chris Hack, who's currently seventh in the standings. Um, in the times, rather, in practice. And look at those times, they're incredibly is... close, aren't they, Scott? Look at that. They all are. the way down to 11th place, they're in the 19s. So you got from 19.6 to 19.9, first to 11th. I mean, if you just breathe in the wrong place during, during the Super Bowl qualifying here, you're going to be four or five rows back. <laughs> and what's incredible, also, if you look at the times, how they measure, top 26 are all measured by less than a second. That just shows you how competitive these new 2013 players, which were introduced back in Croft, of course, they've now had, this is their third race weekend, so of course they've had a time to break, that team's had time to break them in, to kind of get to know them a bit more, the characteristics of how they drive, how they differ from the 2008 players that we used for the first six or seven rounds of the, the first six rounds of the championship, and we've had uh, pretty much for the past three seasons as well. So these guys seem to have taken them very quickly. Some drivers love them, some drivers are not so keen on them. People like Chris Hack, uh, the, the, sorry, John Monroe, sorry. Um, Chris Butch is not one of those not too keen on them, but still, he's actually been very surprisingly quick here so far. Fifth, fifth, he's fifth quickest. He's also, when we raced here last year, he took one pole position and one victory, and he also holds, well, he, he, he did hold the, 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 <laughs> yes. the, the track record, because it was a 121 last year. That's been smashed by two seconds. Currently, I think, held by Eric Strana. So, um, Butch is looking very quick this weekend uh, so far. Other drivers are looking pretty nice for the survival stick project in practice as Keithy goes off on the 119.7. One driver I'm really looking at look for right now, third place in the practice, Chris Shepard. Fantastic job. I believe this is his first race weekend in the Clio, especially in Division 1, I suppose, at least. Third, third for quickest, behind, in there with the likes of Strana and the Precision and THR boys. Really good performance as we head into qualifying now. Hey, it's very nice to from Chris. Rodriguez. It, 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 very nice to from Chris, sorry to interrupt, but very nice from Chris Go because... On. Um, obviously, it's his debut in the Tom Lewis Cole Clio series. He had practiced a lot with uh, with Eric Strahan and Simon Kilo for Silverstone, ah. so just you know, just enjoying it, you know, just you know, just enjoying driving the cars, which kind of, you know, um, puts the, the the a good mark on on how good these new cars are. And hmm. also as well, he's had lots of uh, success. Well, he's not had a race win, but he's had plenty of uh, top fives and, and a couple of podiums, if I remember correctly, off the top of my head, in the Virtual Mini Challenge last season as well, um, just a few months ago. So he's certainly hot stuff. Uh, in these uh, front-wheel drive lo low-powered cars, so it's it, uh, he's very impressive, but it's not 100% surprising that uh, that he's in that situation. That's true, and also another driver I'm looking at very, very well, and is able to get to, get to achieve a 190, and actually has. He's uh, Pipe Rodriguez, seventh quickest in practice. Uh, he was pretty quick in the practice sessions, as I've just seen at the exit of Montreal. I think we've got an errant clear somewhere. Looks like looks like to me Cameron Wynne Jones as. Uh, Pointed at the wrong way, exiting Montreal hairpin. Quite why he's gone down that escape road, I've no idea. He's supposed to turn left, not straight on camera. But <laughs> anyway, um, drivers again, I'm looking out for who are who are down in practice time. So I thought we'd ship to, if we want to be a bit more up there. I see Florian Strauss down in 12th, Pedro Amaral's down in 14th place, uh, Toby Davis down in 16th. He really's not enjoying this Seston circuit, even though despite he is the reigning MSA Supercar champion, and he actually won, albeit on the 300 there, but he won here. Uh, pretty recently uh, at Steston, but that was the well, two to three races, in the clear. second in the other one. So he was. He did as well. Impressive. Yeah, so a little bit surprising that maybe he's been uh, feeling a little bit of pressure and been busy with his racing duties and such. And of course, he goes to goes to uni as well. So maybe he's had too much on his mind there and not really. He's actually graduated from uni now. He's uh, working full time oh, for uh, a vehicle design uh, company as well. Uh, uh, That's correct. Yeah. Template and and, and liveries and, and and decals that sort of thing. So he's doing exactly what he wants to do. In <laughs> For his, for his, 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 if you gave him a dream job, it would be that, you know, uh, designing and, and, and basically painting cars. That's uh, fantastic for him. But we're watching Florian Strauss now as he goes around the circuit. That very, very fast uh, riches. They take that in fourth gear. You're up into fifth here, just before uh, you're breaking for this corner here. Some people go down into first for that. Some go into second. It's actually quickest. Just knock it into first, get the engine braking, and then quickly change up to second, and then power up the corner so you don't get too much understeer uh, pressing that throttle. I've got a very heavy right foot myself so I, it's easy for me to press that <laughs> Ditto, going to second gear and now down this long 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 straight into 
uh, the uh, Brundle and Nelson now they've recalled it at the S's. And oh, and Strauss oh. has hit the grass slightly, saves us life, fantastic save there from Florian Strauss. That will have affected his lap time, but fantastic for us to watch, no doubt. He go down into second uh, through there, and now he's in fourth, just holding in fourth in low revs through the bomb hole, trying not to rewind. Florian's done that, which will have cost him, and now he's come, come through uh, Corum, which is fifth on entry, which kind of, some people go uh, keeping in fifth, some people go to fourth, and then it's quickly down to second for this final corner. It's very, very difficult to get the car braked and into there. You either understeer or oversteer or turn it too early. It always seems completely wrong. And then, of course, you just drive straight to the line now. And that's how quick this circuit is over. 1 minute 20.495 from Florian. Puts him third at the moment, which is not going to be good enough for him and not good enough for Toby Davis. It's 20.365. He looks very underbaked for this event. Yeah, certainly. And the man who's currently top of the standings is the only man in the 119 so far. And that is Chris Shepard. So certainly all the experience that he's experience he's had in the minis and also all the, the practicing he's been doing with uh, Eric Strano and Simon Keel is definitely paying off and uh, he really is showing the fruits of his labour right now. So good job from Chris to get himself up there. Peter Rodriguez has popped in second on the 120.2. Not the time to the flying time to see again, him. They? they are they're coming flying at the last. moment. Uh, John Monroe's gone to sixth, so even with that mistake from Strauss, Monroe hasn't been able to beat him. Pedro Amaral is a tenth off Monroe's time with a 20.6. We're still waiting for the likes of Eric Strano and Keithy and Kilov and Butcher and Hacken, Talborg and Salo all to come out on track to set a lap time. Those who are currently on laps at the moment I can see are, I believe, Gary Lennon, Scott Sovic, Nick Hughes is also on a lap, and his son, Thomas Matazewski as well. So we've got so the big boys still haven't come out to make to set their lap times yet, but of course we've still got six minutes left. So and these guys don't like to rush themselves when they come out. They like to take their time, see, watch the times come through, and then go and nail their lap near the end of the session. That always seems to be the case with these guys, with the exception of Toby Davis. He always likes to be out first. I, I've, I've, I've still, over all the years of competing in, in, the, in the, the Clio series and these Super Pole sessions, I still have not decided what is the best way to approach the qualifier session. Do I go out first? Do I go in the middle? Do I go out at the end? Do I go out when there's, when there's, there's no marker set so that you've got less, less kind of pressure, less looking at the times? Or do you look at, um, at things like, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, do you just go out in the middle of it so you just get you can just, uh, things just happen around or do you go out at the end when you know what mark you have to hit it, it's always interesting um, just by the way we've got Chris Hack and Eric Strana and Jesper Tolborg uh, well Lennon Jesper Tolborg just starts to lap so uh, but Strana's so definitely got... starting to start to lap well he's actually one tenth up on Chris Shepard at the moment mm, indeed and Tolborg is also coming around the Montreal hair and onto the Bentley straight right now so we'll have to keep track of his one but yeah it is something of course we, we always see in real motorsport, of course, that we see drivers leaving it out very late because, of course, you know, the, the more cars that are out there on the circuit, the more the track gets rubbered in. So, it, it, you know, it's more, not only is it kind of the tyres, but, of course, with more rubber on the track, it becomes more sticky. So, it means you've got a better chance of setting a really good lap time and getting that right in there. You see, for example, in Formula 1, Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull are seem to be the kings of just picking that optimum moment of going out. So, you're getting out there at the last possible moment before the flag drops to end the session. So, you can get across the line and set a lap time. Be one of the last people to, sell, to uh, get across that line and set the time. And usually... For the most part, it seems that Vettel is worked for it, but of course this season we've had things for people such as Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg, of course, and Mercedes have been the kings of qualifying. But of course, this is Clio's, not F1, so we'll come back to this in a moment. 20.2 uh, there from Eric Strand. So, but Chris mm. Shepard has done more than one time lap here, and it is a super pole format. So he will be disqualified from taking part in this race and won't be able to take part oh at all. So that's a bit of a blunder there from Chris, not uh, recognising and the rules. And also, what's surprising, look, he's popped the second, Jimmy Hughes. Did you expect that? I did Jimmy not Hughes expect that from Jimmy Hughes. fantastic effort. He's taken full advantage one. of the slightly lackluster times that are coming through. I've no doubt about that. Where is uh, Jesper Torborg? Where is he going to pop into? Sorry to skip through sixth. the field like this, but he so many of us. Sixth. He's gone sick just as I was skipping through. He's gone sick with 20.441. So, yes. let's have a look. Sammy no Kilo is back there. Chris, yeah. Chris well, Butcher. Yeah. Also not set a lap time yet. Jack Keith is on the track. Who is on a lap time? Chris Hack is on a lap time right now, Scott. Yes, he is indeed. Let's pick him up there as he heads into Brundle and S's and hugs the inside line through Brundle and then Nelson, that huge sausage curve on the inside line, the anti-cut to stop him from making a mistake there and cutting across and gaining an advantage into the bomb hole. It's one of those corners when they were making these renovations that said they had they were not to touch under any circumstances. I can probably see why it's a fantastic Classic corner, corner where you get a lot yeah. of 
a lot, uh, lot of elevation change. We just right, you dip right down. There's a lot of possible, uh, you know, G as you head down there through Murray's, which is a very tricky approach because, of course, you're approaching it, turning and braking at the same time, which is always very tricky. Watching for the car to come around. I can see that Butch is in the background to start his lap as Hat comes across the line and puts his core racing clear into second, second place. Nice. Great lap, 120.5153. So effectively, that is net pole position because, of course, Chris Shepard's lap will not count because he's done more than one lap. So, so Chris Hack is on pole right now. That could be is, a, a yeah. first, I think. I don't think he's ever had a pole before. That would be fantastic. He's certainly uh, fueled up on cake and cookies. He's brought <laughs> the very loud of Mr. Kipley again, which is... Well, he's maybe he's not any cake and cookies. He's made his car better. But no, because because apparently he has told me he's cut that out. He's trying to be on a diet. It's a bit of a diet. So good on to him, Chris. He's now cut it out, and of course it's definitely the 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 weight loss definitely seems to have uh, gone to his advantage, and he's now taken pole position effectively. Uh, Keithy is currently setting his lap time, as is Chris Butcher. So Butcher's now on the back straight, but Keithy's now coming round to end his lap time. So we'll see as he heads through Corum under brakes. How much curb does he take? Oh, just brushes the sausage curb, but took that curb perfectly. Put, couldn't have hit that line through Murray's any better. And he fires the precision clear towards the line. Championship leader, will he be pole? Towards the line he comes. And the time is 1.9. No, it's not. It is. Yes, it, it is. It is pole. It is pole. Still 4,000 off Chris Shepard's time. But Jack Keithy, that is crucial for him because he needed pole position. He needs every advantage he can get. And starting pole will definitely That's give him the best though, chance. And he's got Lawrence right next to him quickly. as well. Indeed, and that will basically give him exactly... So he's got Larrison for backup now on the front row at the moment, which means that effectively if he gets into the lead, lead and stays there, that will give him the maximum 50 points he needs to take full advantage of the fact that, well, Chris as Butcher Butcher goes, goes sixth. sixth. Yep. So, uh, THR, you know, not quite up there. Chris Butcher is best as sixth, and then Toby Davis mm -hmm. and Jesper Tor were back in ninth and tenth. That is true, but as we were saying, Keithy is in the perfect position now, because of course that means he'll start from pole, Larrison's there for backup on the front row, and basically now, with Toby Davis and Jesper Tobol down in 9th and 10th, they'll have the likes of Hack and Jimmy Hughes and Butcher and Strong. Well, Butcher will probably be masked away at some point to try and be a bit more of a help, you would have thought. Strana and Rodriguez also in there too. But we're like coming from behind the likes of Florian Strauss and John Monroe too, so the THR boys have to try and fight their way through the field and through the through the rest of the top 10 to try and get anywhere near Keithy and Larrison, whereas Keithy's got that cushion of Larrison as kind of like a buffer between him and the rest of the pack. So Keithy is in the optimum position to take away as many points as he can and extend that championship lead compared to Davis and Tobol. So he is in the prime seats right now. Sam Keeler's out on track at the moment. Remember, he has won plenty of races this season, but is well outside of the championship hunt after disconnecting from one particular race and being disqualified for a technical infringement at a previous race, so that's uh, going to be difficult for him. But Rasmus Sala will track him because he's just up ahead of Simon Kilo. Simon Kilo is also going quickly, so we're going to watch these two come over the line. Rasmus is just further up the straight than Simon Kilo, so we can keep an eye on both of them here. Rasmus now heading through Brundle and Nelson. Nice and tidy through there. Collect the curve on the exit. Just run out wide, use as much as you can. Try not to understeer. It's horrible through there, the understeer. It really is. And now Salo comes towards the bomb hole, trying to get nice and tidy through there. Keep up the revs as well, because your low revs through there in fourth gear. We're going to keep them up and get that power up, and he's a tenth up on Chris Shepard's time, which remember, will he will be disqualified from this race because he has set more than one lap in this session. So he won't be able to race. So Jack Keithy is the person who's on pole right now. Kevin Enderman has got yeah. the fourth spot. I was about and to mention John, that. John, uh, Scott, how on earth has that happened? That's incredible. Just luck of the draw, I guess. And Salo's pole. Absolute incredible outright pole absolutely. from Salo. Where will Kilo go? We'll watch Kilo time come across. Second. Second. Second spot for Kilo. So going at the end, seems to be the fastest way around. Where did Eric Tavite end up uh, coming? As Manuel uh, Amaral is about to finish his look. lap, Tavite. he was. Um, he was his Amaral's brother to Pedro now. Amaral. And what will Amaral produce? He's going to 31st, so he'll be pretty happy with that, in fact, actually. 31st of and 38 cars. Yep, and Tavite went 10th. Well, well, effectively, he's 11th, but that'll be 10th, of course, when Shepard goes to the back of the grid. So, Tavite's got himself effectively into the top 10, so that wasn't a bad lap, and he'll li he, he will line up alongside teammate Eric Strana. So, those two bosom chums are going to be up there on the fifth row of the grid. And, the, and what's interesting also, look at that. All of that has bumped Toby Davis and Jesper Tolwell down to 12th and 13th. That is an absolute disaster. So here is the grid now then for this race. What a fantastic qualifying session that was. It was indeed. Let's take it through then. So Rasmus Sala then takes pole position. Rather surprisingly, we always said that Tom Onslow Cole Clio does produce surprise pole sitters, usually in for race two, but for race one, it's the opposite. So Ras so Sala takes pole then from Simon Kilov on row two, on, on, on second place. Ignore Chris Shepard because, of course, he's going to be going to the back of the grid. 
because of do he did more laps than he no, could have done. No, he's not even in allowed to qualify at all. He's disqualified, in fact, so he won't be racing at all. Oh, OK, fair enough. So he's not racing at all. It's rather a shame because he's showing some fantastic fantastic pace. So that means now Jack Keithley will be third on the grid with Kevin Enderman alongside him. Fantastic effort. That was unclear. Well, no, that's incorrect because um, Larrison has jumped out of the server for a second. So it's still going to be Keithley and Larrison on row two. Row three is going to be Kevin Enderman and Chris Hack. And then it's going to be Jimmy Hughes, seventh. Great support from him. He, he seems to be getting better and better in that Walker Racing play. Much better results. Runs up there in the top ten. Now he's seventh on the grid. Good job from him. And sorry, who was who was eighth? Just eighth was Butcher. Sorry about that. It's a surprise. Keeping Scott his toes eight. here in the broadcast. Yes. Um, he's trying to test me here. He's, he tested because of what I'm going to come at this weekend. I'll talk about it in a moment. Um, Butcher's eighth. Row 5 is, of course, it's all ice cold, so it's uh, Strana and Tavice on row 5. Row 6, Pipa Rodriguez and Toby Davis. Yes, but Tolwell down in 13th on row 7 wow. with Matt Richards for company. Florian Strauss and John Monroe, two fairly big names down on row 8. They've got a lot of work to do. 17th on the grid. Uh, I need to probably look at that one because that hasn't come through on the screen. Who is that in 17th? It's actually, it's Pedro Amaral. Uh, no, it's not, in fact, because that's rather odd. It should be Pedro Amaral and someone it, it's someone else and Pedro it Amaral may. nine. I'm not quite sure who it is in fact. Well, it's disappeared anyway. We'll, we'll move yeah. on. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll persevere. Um, Luca Peklaj and Mike Bell. It doesn't cover. Uh, on row 10. And then we've got oh, Colin Levin. It gets, all, it gets all of the flat. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Gary Levin and Darren Adams on row 11. Row 12 is going to be Nick Hughes and Scott Sovic. Uh, I believe presume he's running the standard livery again because, of course, the last time out he ran his uh, 100th, 100th race anniversary livery uh, back last time out of Silverstone. He ran it twice in a row, of course, because his races at Croft weren't all that spectacular. So you got a chance to get to run it at Silverstone. Absolutely. Um, you've got Thomas Jacobs and Thomas Demelin on row 13. Thomas Madazewski and Robert Powell on row 14. Row 50, of course, our big extended grid for this, these two races. Lee Palmer and Manuel Amaral, because, of course, he's now up into 30th place. He's his brother, Pedro Amaral. 31st place on the grid, we've no idea, because the, 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 the position's blanks. So obviously, blanks, whoever that was, has obviously jumped out of the server at the moment. And David Carter for Smile Racing, 32nd. Uh, row 17 is going to be Matt Emmons and James Fellows. Row, row 18 is going to be Andy Bonnar and Cameron Wynne-Jones. Looks like he's, got, he's found, found the track this time, facing the wrong way. <laughs> facing the right way this time. And at the back of the grid, in 37th place, all by himself, is going to be Cameron Brewster for the sixth axis. So what a incredible grid. 37 cars taking the start here tonight, right? Obviously, our, our usual limit at the beginning of the series was 32. But it looks like for this occasion, for the end, we've kind of just expanded well, it. We've let a few drivers in. If, um, if we'd left, obviously, at 32 and you have six people in Division 1, so that's no fun yes. for them at all. <laughs> so uh, we decided just to, to roll them in here. We ran, actually, for about 40 here last season at this particular track, so the track can handle it. In fact, there was only actually one one incident in both races. It was pretty good, actually. And um, so we, we, you know, we felt it was pretty uh, pretty sensible just to, just to run, um, you know, just a, a merged field here. But I would say that Toby Davis m missed a bit of a, a bullet there. He's um, further up the grid than he would expect after... Um, a time that was you know, well off what was being produced in the, in, the in, in pre-practice. Yeah, of course. I think I think to be too honest, I think we were probably expecting a lot more drivers to get 119s, weren't we? Because we had, uh, had 11 drivers were setting those kind of times. There were sub 120, and the rest were all kind of the whole field was separated by about 28 cars were separated by less than a second. So we were hoping that we'd see a few more quicker times. But of course, it seems as though some drivers either made mistakes, they ran wide, they took corners faster than they should, and of course, maybe counted the curbs too much, or just simply got held up by traffic. So, obviously, they weren't able to put in the 119 laps they were managing in practice. So, and of course, it is one shot qualifying, so of course, you have to, it, it, it's effectively now or never when you go out on track for that lap. You, you pick your moment in that 10 minute session, you go out there, and you drive the best that you can, whilst dealing with, dealing with whatever the, the circuit and the lap throws at you, whether it's an awkward line, whether it's, you know, cars spinning off, cars also on their out laps, their in laps, flying laps as well, because it can happen. You can get held up on someone who generally isn't on the same pace as you, but is on a, happens to be on a flying lap at the same time. So, you know, and rather as much as you want to see them get out of the way, I'm, I'm faster than you guys. You know, you have to respect the fact that, yes, they're slow, but they're on the hot lap too. So you know, they would probably, if it was roles reverse, they would probably be doing exact, saying exactly the same thing to you if you were the one that were off the pace and they were the one that was gutting possibly for pole positions so 
who knows? Of course, we've seen a few surprises, a few drivers who I think are a little bit out of position due to probably some not running as fast as they probably would have hoped, and drivers who I think uh, possibly sh were expected to be higher up the grid. Some good surprises from drivers, again, vice versa, who wouldn't expect it to be as high up as they are, especially Kevin, like, Kevin Enderman, if you like. So, this is going to be quite a fascinating first race, I think. Of course, we've still and got Salo, race two in the qualifying that's, session. That's two poles in a row for Salo, Scott. So oh, that's absolutely. incredible stuff for him as he set up on their formation lap. Indeed. So what we'll do is obviously we'll tick them off. And of course, uh, what's intriguing on my screen is that, um, of course, I think it's a shader issue because the, the screen you're seeing on there is a uh, lovely no, green glass. It's, it's fine. It's fine, Scott. It's fine. No, no, it's fine. No, no, I'm just mentioning just for, just for comedy purposes. It's please. absolutely but fine. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't well, you mention that? Uh, no, but I'm going to the racing, shall we? Salo on pole position oh. with Kilo in behind. He's <laughs> got Kilo, Keekley and Lauritsen second, third and fourth riding behind. So it's THR versus position right at the front. But of course, it's not the THR the car that cars have expected. We expect Jasper Torborg and Toby Davis to be mixing it with the precision guys. And mm. one wonders if that bad blood between THR and precision will continue uh, with Salo uh, fighting with them. What do you think? Well, what's intriguing is that um, the nearest, the next THH car on the grid from Rasmus Salo is Chris Butcher back in eight. So Salo doesn't really have much support. He's got three rather, rather rabid precision cars. You see Kilo looking back just weaving from side to side, it's it quite rather extremely to get some heat into the tyres, a lot more than everyone else is doing. It's like Keithy and Larris, they're just sitting there thinking, what on earth are you doing, Simon? But he's, he's just sitting there warming his tyres up. But he, that could be also a distraction tactic, possibly, for Salo, because he could be looking back thinking, Kilo is sw swinging this way and that, so possibly he could be doing that to try and put me off. And it might work, he might get a poor start, he might get a poor run into the first corner, and Kilo might take advantage of that one. But We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Butcher, will, if you don't have to get any before, any support to him, he'll have to get a crack of a start and get past the likes of Ever Enderman and Hack and Hughes to make sure that gets through. Davis and Tarbog are also going to be hell hoping to get past a few of the guys in the top 10 also. And John Monroe back in 15th, so he's going to have to really hope that either there's some first corner shenanigans or that he gets a lightning uh, cracking getaway as well. So. This could be pretty intriguing. I think Salo's, been done, Salo's always done this thing where he's got a good start, but then seems to fall back pretty quickly through the race. We saw that, I think, in race two at Silverstone. So history could repeat itself here, but um, who knows? Salo might prove us wrong and have a great What's race. What's your prediction, Scott? Oh, quickly before we get on, I am going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Lauritsen, I think. He's had a couple of race wins. Might surprise today. And uh, I think... Ke but so I think Hart says Lauritsen, but I think Head says Keithley to, get his ch to maximise his championship lead. Okay, and it could all be over, remember. All Keith, all Keith needs to do is score around about 30 more points overall than Jesper Torborg. Just waiting for the grid, uh, grid to form up now. Of course, there are 30... Uh, how many drivers have we actually got it on, on the race? We've 37, got 36 drivers. 36, 36 drivers on the grid, so we need to wait for... Oh, they've all ridden up very quickly indeed. That's great stuff. So watch for the lights there on the left-hand side. Salo leading the way from the position guys in behind. Will he be swallowed up by position? Green lights, and away we go. That's a good start, Evan Kingley. He is gaining on Salo, but Salo has a decent head start with that grid position. Let's see how it works out going out the first corner. And indeed, Solo just comes across just about squeezes in front there of Jack Keithy. Manuel Amaral hasn't got away from the grid. He's back in the pits, it seems. So he's just briefly shown as in second spot. If you ignore that for now, because Solo is in pole position to try and hold off this precision train right in behind him. And uh, it's Kevin Enderman has dropped back to sixth spot with Chris Hack has jumped up into fifth. So here we go. As everyone crosses over that sector line now, we get all the corrected... Uh, Directed for uh, positions. So Salah from Kilo from Keith from Lawrence and Hack, Enderman, Hughes and Butcher. Oh, no, Butcher Salah. way off the track. What's That's going on here? Butcher way, way off the track. Not sure what's happened to Chris Butcher. Oh, he's off. Oh, he's he's in the wall. The well. Was that Chris Butcher? I think was he was. Was it Chris Butcher in the wall? I it must have been because he... he's, yes, all the way back. Matt Evans is out of the yeah. race as well on the first lap. He has gone out due to an accident. So let's try and find out what's happened to Chris Butcher. Here he is coming back onto track now. Can we get a replay of that, perhaps? I'm not sure what's happened, he's had a, he's had a system failure of some kind, look, because he's just gone, maybe crashed back to desktop, or his pills come loose, or his monitor, or something like that. He's on the brakes there, trying to stop it, it's hit the wall quite hard, and now he's way, way back in the field, and he's off the track also again, look, now we're Oops. back to live action. So it's not going well at all. Back in the front of the field, Scott. Yes, indeed. I think I did see, if it was lag, I saw one of the smile cars go off in the background, and Kilov dives out to have a look at Salah into Richie's corner, very fast right-hander here, but of course, these players, it's pretty rapid as they Kilo, head then as down Jack Keithley as well, so that's the story. Yeah, Kilo is now, in fact, I'm pretty sure, well, no, Kilo starts ahead of Jack Keithley, so he, well, he, he was ahead of Keithley. Oh, anyway. yes, he did, yes, my, my apologies, my big <laughs> there. 
Yes, so, yeah. so, 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 yes, yes. We, are, we are, as we started the race, apart from that Kevin Enderman has lost one position at the moment. Toby Davis is up to right. 11. Yes, but Torbo's had a great start to the race, but 13 to 9. And to right as well, to right's up to the place as well, so great start for him. Uh, Davis is down to 11th, he's got Florian Strauss for company at the moment. Eric Strana's still in 10th position as they filter down the Bentley straight in towards Brunson Nelson for the second time. As Manuel Amaral down oh, the race. Oh, Davis straight on! Absolutely straight on goes Toby Davis. He needs to oh, slow up as possible. And he's going to lose the position to Florian. And that's you know, fairly fair, I would say, that if, if he kept that position there, then he might have got penalised because he would have avoided, obviously, losing that position. Up the row is back there in 13th. Slowest the precision guys at the moment, but of course it's difficult in that precision camp to be to be uh, if, if, if the slowest. He's still one of the quickest guys out there, so it's no mean uh, no uh, no what's the word? What am I looking for, Scott? To say? No mean feet. Well, it's no mean feet no, to be. No. Well, no, that's rubbish as well. It's no mean feet to be fastest <laughs> there in that group <laughs> in the back. And then, so back in the ground, here is John Munro. Not to be sniffed out to be slow as the position group guys. Isn't that that's what I'm trying to say? No. I still can't think of it. But anyway, Matt Richards here is uh, leading from Nick Hughes. They go side by side into the first corner. Matt just slides across ever so slightly to block off Nick from trying to take any action there. And Nick's trying to go down the inside down into uh, the hairpin. Somebody else up over the head was making a move. It was Eric Strong it was fighting with Lennon and to fight. And Tolbog just got past the fight as well. I watched him into the monster of the hairpin. So that's now Tolbog into eighth position as Jimmy Hughes is in the situation with Kevin Enderman, that wonderfully livery car has got beats by Dr. Brown on the side, so it's a fantastic looking livery on that car, and he's definitely doing it justice as they head down towards the breaking zone of Brunton Nelson, the, the bridge again for the third time, and then he gets a little bit sideways, and I did see Chris Hack was putting Barrett's under pressure towards the Montreal hairpin as well, he darted out to have a look, but just got back, and Enderman now has got Jimmy Hughes, who's put in another fantastic performance in the top ten so far, as um, oh, giving some go for it. Oh, another place you oh. want to have just a slight overlap, you need to have a full overlap there to make that kind of thing work. And you look at Jesper Torborg gaining that ground, and these guys are ahead of him now. He's loving this bit of battling. Here comes Jesper Torborg right up behind them. Tobias got wide in the final corner as well. Strahan is just trying to run through, but Tobias going to run on the outside. Maybe I think uh, Tobias should let Strahan go through because Strahan has been quicker than Tobias recently, but Tobias not that kind of person. Torborg right in behind Hughes still. Kilo sets a fast lap of the race. Just as Salah did the same thing. So very close to the foot of the field. We are keeping an eye on it. You're not missing anything at the moment. They're all very, very quick, very, very close to each other, but uh, not much happened because there's not much difference between the guys. Oh, and uh, Hughes has made a big, big look up there and almost went straight on. And Torborg has snuck straight through. Torborg needs no second station there. Absolutely. Torborg knows exactly what's at stake. He knows he needs to make up these positions quick and positions and quick because he knows. The more time he spends back behind his position cars, the more likely it's going to be that Keith is going to take advantage and score more points. And Jimmy Hughes isn't done yet. He's coming back at him down the Bentley straight. Will he make a move? No, he darted out to try and distract Talbot, but couldn't make it stick. I can actually tell as the two ice cold cars went side by side a little bit. And Strahan's got a little Strahan has got past the bike now then. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can actually tell you that Chris Butcher actually put me on TV to say it was a monitor power cable that forced him to go wide. So that's the reason why. He crashed it into the barrier seat. I think he is back out on track, but he's way down the order. In fact, he's now two, a lap down and in 34th place. He had to go to the pits to repair all that damage as well. So yeah, and Cam will be thrown But he only had a small well. amount of damage, didn't he? Uh, coming, you know, coming off there, but maybe something. Maybe it was more serious than we thought, but he had massive damage oh. when you looked at it next time. Who was that in the background there? Was it was a surprisingly position car. The, well, was it was Leonard. Oh, no, it, it would be Matt Richards. Well, there, was, there was one road to fight. And I, there was one road to fight, and also I saw both of the... Uh, ice cold cars. Always oh, Jimmy Hughes and Edmund side by side through Richie's corner and Butcher's left the uh, the game. And now Hughes is now going to go around the outside under breaks he's down. Made it stick. Control. He's made it Good stick. Line, and he's through into seventh place. He's now chasing Tolbo through the traffic. Tolbo now up to sixth position as he now starts his charge to walk across after Chris Hack as the top four are now running nose to tail down the Bentley straight for the fourth for the fifth time. With Hack just falling away now in that pink. Paul the Novo car, Tolbo now starting to break away as Jimmy Hughes, Enderman and Strana going three wide down towards Brunda Nelson, will you make it stick? Jimmy uh, Hughes uh, fight for the lead line. though Scott, fight for the lead though Scott because Kilo tried to go around the outside of Salo on the exit of Nelson and didn't make it where there was contact and Keith there just gone, thank you very much, I'll take that second spot away from you. Absolutely, and to watch you also back, there was a great map going on, and we've got cars in the background off, Nick Hughes off onto the grass, he was fighting with that was Matt Richards, who's now side by side with Luca Peckleis. That's over 16th place. It's got so it's holding on just ahead. As the bill once again heads through it. Oh, 
Hughes is giving Strana the big hip and shoulder through the through Murray's corner, but Strana's got through past the boat pair of them. Strana on the charge, four man is up to seventh place. Paul Carter off in the background, and that is who is that? That's that's uh, that's Sovic. Richards and Peck Raj again and more cars going off in the background. Huge pack fighting, almost three wide down the pit straight. And there's all more cars and Lee Palmer's almost out of control down towards Richie's corner. Oh, he's somehow it, managed to hold just, it. Just caught it. That was incredible car control. Absolutely unbelievable. And oh, there's still contact there. Oh, is it getting a bit hectic right now? That's uh, Servig and Adams in a big, big battle. <laughs> Look at this. Push each other one way and the other. And Cervic has snuck through. Not quite sure how he managed to hold on to that. I'm not sure how Lee Palmer held on to that car coming down that straight. We'll watch that the replay. Absolutely. I've been on quite board with him will go, in fact, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's it. We just go on board with him. There we go. He tried to go. He just ignored the lag for a second. He tried to go down the inside of somebody and it all got out of shape and he just about corrected it and went back across the track and fortunately the, the, uh, the turn came up and it was pretty quick it wasn't a turn he needed to break too much for he was able to run wide just minimise um, any any time loss and any any uh, any mistake there really yeah definitely um, it was a really close battle between them uh, whilst, whilst you're looking at that I'm just keeping track sorry as we continue to watch Lee Palmer I'm noticing up front that Talborg is um, well, he's pretty keen to catch up to the guys in front. <laughs> oh, 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 Richards has flipped that final corner just a bit too hard. And that's what happens. He just tips you on your side and away you go. Absolutely. Down the field. Let's look at this racing down here. There's Manizevsky and Adji very close together. The two THR blue cars along with Mike Bell. They'll be trembling in their boots with him behind him. There's Demelin as well and Powell. Powell way back actually would expect Powell to be a bit further up. And Pedro Amaral would expect to be a bit further up also. Carter. Fellows, Brewster and Bernard. Bernard off the track, oh dearie me. He's last, oh he's got big, big damage as well. He's coming to the pits. He's coming to the pits, Andy, he's coming to the pits. Oh, he's not done it. You have to do a whole lap there with a front left puncher on a track Ryan. that turns right over and over. Oh, Ryan back to the front because Larris and Keel have a side by side into Nelson's corner. Was, and in fact, Keaton's got through. That was a couple of corners back. So Keaton's in second place. But Keel and Larris now, they actually use such shoving match to run the Nelson. Summer, how they both got to run skate. Chris Hack was also making it three wide. And look at Tolborg. Tolborg's now made it a four car train. And he's oh, so charging here. Is it only three seconds off the lead now? Well, look what's look where he dropped the guys behind him. What's intriguing is that I was watching him and he's actually, he's so desperate, he's actually putting two wheels onto the grass and into some of the corners, not cutting them as such, but just, he's so keen to try and catch up, but he's having to take desperate measures, he's now trying to catch up, he seems to have paid off his hack, he's literally pushing Larratz down the pit straight, this is for fifth position, Hatch blood, Hatch bloods up as he heads into Richie's corner, but Larratz has got the line well and Talbot's closing in as well on these three, as you see, Keith is now just chasing after Sovic and or oh, Salo, sorry, and is Hack going to make a move down the inside? No, he's not far enough alongside the inside of Larrison. It is going to be Simon Keel, who holds on to third. Larrison fourth, Hack fifth, and Tarbor sixth. And the rest of the top ten, it's Strana seventh, Jimmy Hughes eighth, and Toby Davis up to only just got past Eric to Vite now for ninth place as they head through onto the Bentley straight for the eighth time. Tolborg has shot up to the front of this field. I'm very impressed with the way he's come through the field. He's had a terrible qualifying, of course, back in 13th, and he wasn't any good in, uh, in, his, in his kind of one lap pace even prior to qualifying. So that was kind of expected in a way, not before the event, of course, because Jesper Tolborg is, is the most successful driver in TPN's history. But he's absolutely charged right up to the back of this lead group, and he's now only three seconds off the lead of the race. But of course, now it gets more difficult to pass cars. As you get further and further forward, it gets more difficult to pass cars. You start battling more, and you lose that ground you've gained on the leader. The Salo is leading by almost a second now from Jack Keithley. So Salo could be heading for his first ever Thomas O'Cole series win here. And remember he has one win before in the Touring Pro Series. That was back in uh, World Touring Masters Season uh, 3. Uh, that was the Salzburg ring in uh, Holden. So he's had a few poles as well now. In fact that's three poles, uh, four poles in fact he's had in his TPS career. One at the same track we just talked about a second ago. One earlier in the season when he was driving for Optimum Motorsport, uh, Optimum Sim Racing should I say, when uh, he took pole position at Thruxton. Remember that Scott, that was a fantastic lap from him. And then back at Silverstone and now we're here. So there's plenty of promise from Salo. Yeah most definitely. He's still actually doing the same thing that he's done in the past couple of races when he has been on the front. Because usually we see him take, like he did at Silverstone, he took pole position and as we said, he just falls back through the field, he doesn't have the race pace, and he just seems to march himself towards the back of the top ten and outside of it. So Rasmus now seems to have found something. 
off the back of this as we're now watching He does, and I think Kilo's struggling here. I think Lawrenson is quicker than Kilo. Kilo's just making a small few mistakes here and there. He's missing Apex, isn't he, at the moment? And Lawrenson is hungry to get past, I believe. Yeah, he's definitely give, always giving Kilo a the hurry up there as a dab of brakes. Another dab of brakes into core. Kevin, look at that. No, look at the car corner. moving around as well. Really, it's really tricky. on the edge. It is a tricky corner because, like I said, like, you're braking and turning. So you, you have to trail brake for such a long time into that corner. And of course, because these players, of course, yes, they're slightly heavier and their rear end's a bit more stable. It doesn't make it any easier on these cars to try and these front wheel drive cars to try and stop them. And we're seeing now Larrison has got the slipstream. He's just trying to pull alongside it. Kilo's oh, making he's it got difficult. the switch back. He's filled him. He's filled his teammate there. His teammate. And pull back across thinking he was going to make a move. Ooh. Oh, but Kilo was strong and chopped off the line. Torvald's made a mistake in the final corner, by the way. He's just gone slightly off, I think. That's easy, very, very easy to do that final corner. Has to be said. Oh, down the inside. There we go. Oh, oh no. contact. There's contact. There's an end of the crossover. And Hack is through. So Lawrenson has lost out. Let's watch that on the replay. Didn't quite catch exactly what happened there. I'm sure you did as the viewers, but I didn't. And I want to see it again. Here comes Lawrenson. He's sick of being behind Kilo. You can definitely tell that. And he pulls out. He goes for the inside there on Kilo, gets sideways, oh he gets sideways and oh he almost the back end of the car kind of brushed over the top of Kilo, so that was a very strange uh, piece of contact. It was and of course <laughs> the best thing was Chris Hack just saw the gap and went, thank you very much boys, I will slip like the fourth position and he's done just that and already he's giving Kilo a lot of headaches and of course now Larrison for the one to step behind the off the pace car, off the pace Kilo it seems and now it's Chris Hack's turn to do so. So Chris Hacknaff, he's the one, it's his turn to be in a precision sandwich as they head into the Corum and then Murray's corner. And now look at this, what's intriguing. If you look at this five car battle that's going on the third, look behind, Eric Strahan has caught up as well. Yep. So he's Absolutely. now tagged onto the rear of these guys. There's another car in the background goes off, kicking up dust as he, as he goes. Couldn't quite see who it was. but Oh, lots of people got off the background there kicking off dust. <laughs> Everyone seems to yeah, get there. But it's, it's a tricky corner on the exit because you've got no runoff area. It's just... It's just Play pure grass and that's it. So really, the, the exit is pretty crucial. You have to make it, make it incredibly tidy unless you suffer a rather indigenous fate. As we see now, Davis is having a look up the inside, trying to dive up past Jimmy Hughes, and he can make it stick. He's right across over the curb, and somehow he made that move, that move stick. Incredible pass. I couldn't believe that's he made, made that stick. That was, that was an excellent breaking move there from from Toby Davis. Really showing his experience and class with these cars. That's really fr in the foreground there, I saw some to dust on the straight which isn't good at all I think it may have been Eric Strana so you don't want to see that at all but um, Toby Davis is having a, a poor race by his standards remember he's the reigning champion so Jimmy Hughes had the reigning champion bearing right down him oh and straight on oh if anybody's around or is Toby Davis at that final corner that's what happens he goes straight on and Jimmy Hughes almost cleaned up Florian Strauss at the same time and almost ended his own race by rolling over but just saved it look at the dust being thrown by these guys it is Hot and a hectic out here. Most definitely. And uh, these guys really are on show here, of course. And these guys know that it's near the end of the season, and these guys who aren't really exactly in a point in, in a championship winning position are just kind of going out there to try and have some fun, really, because of course the clears are fun on the cars to drive, and they're really up on a great show. And they're looking to see that Larrett's trying to go around the outside of Chris Hack in the Richie's corner. Brave Manny can pull it off, but Hack has got the inside rub, but Larrett's is not giving up, and Hack's trying to cover off. The move from Laris, but I think he's, he's got to give him a cast whip. Laris is going to try down the outside. Tarbox it in his position to strike as well. Should the two cars make a mistake? And Laris cuts the corner, entering onto the Bentley straight. So any advantage he gained would have to be given back. And now that's what Tarbox side by side with the fact he's got past. So Tarbox has now slotted himself in the fifth position and getting closer to try and close on, on, closing on that points advantage that Keithy has. Now it's Strana's turn to put Laris under pressure down towards. Brother Nelson under break under, underneath the bridge. And Strana has gone around the outside of Lawrenson and run. <laughs> Look at that for a move. That was brilliant. Superb. Brilliant pass. Brilliant pass. And what's also key just ahead, I know we're looking at that battle for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, but I've noticed that Keithy has started to quickly rear in Salo. He's now got the gap down to just over half a second, so I think we could potentially, if Keithy can pull it off, see a potential switch from the lead. Look at the accuracy soon. from these drivers, though. They're uh, kissing every apex in the front of these two at the moment. It's beautiful to watch. It's such great driving, of course. These, these Clios do try and teach good racing, but of course, sometimes, you know, this is effectively touring car racing. When is touring car racing ever been clean? So it's kind of, it's, they say it's a non contact sport, but it's sometimes these guys never, never learn it, never listen to it. But the fact, fact of the matter is, some people say it's not good racing because it's not sporting and you get all the contact, but some fans love it because, of course, it, it gets the driver's blood up. Of course, it's, it, it tends to watch, and of course, you get so much excitement. 
and it really does make for a fantastic spectacle. And these guys always put on a great show in these players, and it's been proven time after time for the three and a bit seasons, almost four seasons of racing we've had with them. So really these guys do know how to strut their stuff with these cars. Back down the back straight once again. Larison is trying to get the get revenge on Strana and to head down the Bentley straight for the 13th time so we're past the halfway point we're coming up towards the final five laps of this race they've flown by haven't they these uh, these 13 laps I believe well, we're about lap 8 and lap 13 well, already yep well, that time flies when you're having fun that's the saying goes of course you guys certainly are having a ball that there but what we're seeing is, is how Larison is struggling so much to, to, to action and overtake on this track he's, uh, each time he's gone for an, an overtake it's cost in position remember he went for the overtake on, on Kilo and Hack got through they went for the overtake on Hack and Torbo got through and then Stran uh, obviously as a result of that got to run down the straight and round the outside into Nelson that shows the danger in these, these kind of races that if you go for a move in front of you you're under just as much threat from behind yeah well, the, the thing I've always said in broadcast time and time again is that the harder people fight the harder two drivers fight each other the easier it's going to be for cars around them to take advantage for the cars in front to pull away and the cars behind to catch up Classic case in point with the, with the precision guys, of course, they were battling along and look what's happened, of course, Hack, Tolbo, and Strana got themselves into the mix, and now that you can see it, look, the two precision cars are booking, oh, and the Lawrence gets it, they the braking, oh, that was well avoided from Lawrence, and good driver from Merrick Strong because he didn't pinch the corner. Yeah, he didn't. He left enough room for Larison to have his mistake, and thankfully yes. Larison gathered it up in time. So that's that's Curtis driving for both of them. Look at them all going down the inside up. of the straight to uh, try and get the draft of Simon Kilo, who's dropping back into the clutches <laughs> a little bit again. Absolutely, <laughs> and just watching, you see just ahead there, Keith is only four tenths of a second off Silo, and he closes in just bit by bit into each braking zone. So Silo, it's now the case of can he hold on for that final hope, for that, for that first Tawans Do Cole Clio victory? You like to think he possibly can, but Keithy will want every, as many points as he can. He'll get 47 points if he stays in second place, but he'll want the extra three points just to make sure he's got enough of an advantage over rivals Tolborg and Davies. Tolborg so look out for your favourite driver here as he, he comes through. Sorry to interrupt there, Scott, but look out for your favourite driver here as he comes through. There's Hughes just kicking up a bit of dust there uh, with uh, Eric Tavite in behind him. This is the field all coming through at the moment, and it's uh, fantastic to see also as well as they all come through, uh, bought the bomb hole and through into Corum also. Lots and lots of dust being thrown up by everybody as well. We've got 30 people still running in this race at the moment, and points are scored all the way down to 30th spot. So those who are still running will score a few points here, if not more than that. As we see, uh, Jack Keedy's got even closer to Rasmus Salo. Can Rasmus hold his nerve? Jack has four wins this season. Rasmus has zero. And Jack Keedy, remember, is the champion-elect. He is most definitely. Look behind, you see Kielov again going to the inside line to defend his third place for Chris Hack. Tolbog hasn't done that, he's he comes with the outside line and Strana is having to defend the inside now from Larrison. This is for sixth position and let's see if Larrison can do exactly the same as what Strana did to him before. The answer is possibly they're side by yes, side, a bit of panel answer. battling, but Larrison's pulled it off. That so Larrison says, Larrison. absolutely, so Larrison says, anything you can do, Eric, I can do better. And there we go, into sixth position. Now at Talbot's his next target, whether or not Strana will come back, it remains to be seen. Back at the front quickly though, and, Ta and Keithy is as close as he's ever been, so Keithy I think is possibly lining up his glass pretty quickly, because he's now heading on to lap 16, so we're inside the final five laps now, and if Keithy wants those extra three points to go towards the championship, it's going to have to be pretty much now or never. Yes, but of course, he does want to risk it and then end up you know, dropping any position. Because if he gets, if, he, if they get a bit of contact and they, they lose two seconds, look at that group behind, they'll all shoot straight through. Definitely, it's a very good, very good point. I almost never looked at that. But of course, Keithy, of course, will want to get as many points as he can. So, of course, whether or not he takes the risk, or whether or not he sits back and just kind of puts Rasmus under false pressure and hopes that that, that pressure might just... Of course, we, we mentioned earlier, didn't we, Scott? There was only 100 points rem remaining in the championship with a 70 points uh, gap. There are 200 points rem remaining in the championship. What we meant was is that after this round, there will be 100 points left in the championship. Yes. So um, Jack will be very close to uh, to uh, the dealing with that gap. So 100 points will be available at Knock Hill, and uh, 200 points still available. At the moment, Jack is scoring 47 points, and yes, but Torbjorn still quick off the top of my head scoring 41. So the gap will go to 78 points in the championship. So getting ever, ever closer for Jack Keithy to take this championship. And it looks like it's almost a dead certainty for him. But yes, what Holborg is the type of driver who just doesn't give up. Never, ever, ever gives up in the championship. If he starts the championship, he completes it. And he doesn't give up no matter 
what the, uh, the how small the chances are for trying to win the championship, which is what he aims to do, of course. Unlike, um, we could say, perhaps Jeffrey Rietveld uh, from Position Motorsports and the Virtual V8 Supercars, as soon as it seemed like there was only a small chance to win the championship, up uh, away, didn't compete in the, in the next round. And uh, he's lost quite a few fans over that. Been, some fans and drivers have been very critical about that uh, because of that move from Jeffrey. And it's not a good light for Precision Motorsport either. So um, that's a, a, a bit of a concern there for Precision and Jeffrey him, himself. But Torborg's not like that at all. And of course, he, he can't be like that. He's won five championships, soon to be six, of course, remember as well, with the Virtual Beat Supercar this season. So uh, that shows it's going to pay off. This is very, very hard battling indeed. This is Chris Hack. He made a mistake in the final corner, and that allowed Jesper Torborg to have a run on him, and it allowed Lauritsen to have a run on Jesper Torborg, and now it's allowed Eric Strong to have a run on Lauritsen. We said he doesn't give up. He said he doesn't. He wants, he wants to get as many points as he can, because he knows the more points, the more positions, positions he can get by getting past Torborg, the death Oh, past, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's deja vu! Oh, it didn't yeah. work this time! It didn't work! Strange has got a bit too deep! Larison's figured it out! And Larison will take the inside into the bomb hole. That's definitely where you want to be. You do not want to be on the outside of the bomb hole at all. All that camber there. But Keeler really seems like he's struggling out of these, this top group. I mean, he's still third, which is fantastic, really, for him. But compared to the rest of the drivers around him, he's struggling quite a bit, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But of course, he's acting as an important buffer now to the Keeler, because of course, Keith is now free to challenge Silo and of course to try and get the lead, as if he wants to try and challenge for the lead. Certainly putting Rasmus under enough pressure to suggest that he does. The key always is, is most importantly uh, creating a gap between Keith Lee and of course these guys, Hack and Tolborg and Larris and Estrada, who are the ones that are coming on very strong. As for Toby Davis, he's kind of in a bit of no man's land, eighth position, trying to chase after these guys, but really doesn't have the ultimate pace which is rather surprising and rather disappointing at the same time. Gary Lennon's back in line. He has been matching, right he, I've been looking at his lap times and, and the gap, he has been matching um, the, the times of Rasmus at the front of the field, but of course, because he started so far back, and those eight seconds, you just can't make, make up at all. It's just too much for you know for anybody to make up. Yeah, indeed. And uh, Davis, I think, will definitely want a better result, better result qualifying wise for race two, because of course he knows I think really it's getting to the point where unfortunately I think Toby's kind of realised now that his championship chances are kind of finished unfortunately because he, he's still fairly close to Talborg in the points, about five points between the two THR Orange guys so I think really all he wants to try and do now, his best hope is to try and consolidate THR Orange's position in the team's championship because I think for him the individual driver's title is I think it's fair safe to say no more and unfortunately his, he is the reigning clear champion but I'm pretty sure it's uh, his crown going to have to be passed over more than likely to Jack Keith because of course pretty much I think right now it's almost a foregone conclusion it's now a case of when rather than if to secure that title if it's not to be today it will certainly be of course obviously at the final round at Knock Hill as now Keithy is now only a tenth and a half back and he's all over the back bumper of Silo as they head up towards the Montreal hairpin this is going to be fantastic the final lap of course on the final lap as well so down into Montreal for the final time sorry Sears and then Montreal the kick there, and that was beautiful breaking there for Salo, who broke it right into the apex, but Keithy was a match for him also, and now Keithy got a great run out of the corner, and look at that, you can see how much Salo is worried about that, because he's gone right to the inside, but we've seen also that if you are on the outside, you can still action a pass, so it's difficult to know on what line to be coming down to this corner, as they come under the Tom Ozzacol Cleo series bridge, and Salo breaks it on the inside, you've got to be very very careful not to over on the corner, I think that's what Jack was hoping, he didn't challenge too much into there did he, he doesn't want to um, uh, jeopardise his championship chances at all because if he makes a mistake now he has no chance at all to uh, to obviously, uh, um, what's the word, um, re reverse that, repair that mistake and come through once again because all those drivers behind him would just shoot straight through and Salah looks like he's going to take his first ever Tom Walter Cole Cleo series win and his first win for THR, his new team as well. And Salah comes out of the final corner. He'll drive towards the line. And a fantastic result for him, Scott. Absolutely. Cross the line he comes. Rasmus Salah takes race one here at Sneston. Just from Champions League. Jack Keith is third going to Simon Keelov. And Chris Hack fourth. And I think Jesper Talborg just beat out Alexander Larrison for fifth. Less than the tenth line. of a second between the two. Absolutely, and uh, Eric Strano grabs seventh. Toby Davis swinging his THR clear across the line. He definitely seems to be. Well, I'm not sure. I can't tell whether that. either that's anger or that's. It can't be joy because he's in eighth position. But either he's a bit frustrated or I'm not sure what that's all about. But Gary Lennon finishes ninth, and Eric Tavak rounding out that top ten result. Jimmy Hughes missed out in eleventh. John Monroe gets his top fifteen. He was hoping for that. Gets twelfth position. Kevin End. Darren Adams finishing thirteenth. Kevin Enderman, who started the final grid. He did. He's down well, the fine fifth, so it shows how cutthroat this is because he dropped way back to 
17th spot at the end. In fact, that is level true. with the dynamics come across the line. Look at that. So uh, that was very close indeed. And look at some other guys coming through. Some notable guys back down the field. I'm looking here. Uh, Strauss dropped back a lot, didn't he, as well? Yes, he was Michael Davis right at the start of the race. He was 17th for Strauss. He's not been pleased with that at all. And Pedro Amaral down in 20th as well. So his good form has kind of dropped off a little bit as well. Uh, Mike Pell comes across the line in 25th. Um, his clear is on fire, as in properly well, on well, fire. That's, um, that's not surprising <laughs> from Mike Bell. Not surprising at all. Matt Richards in 26th, Bruce in 27th, with Fellows in 28th, and Carter in 29th, the last of the finishers. Well, don't go away, because after all that excitement, it's coming up once again after the break. Hello and welcome, Hello, welcome back, back to the action from Snetterdon in the penultimate round of the Tom Walter Cole Clio series. And we saw some great action there in that first race. Uh, that trailer there was obviously showing the next event and the final event of the Tom Walter Cole Clio series, which will take place at Knock Hill, as you can see there on the calendar, on the 14th of August. Looking forward to that. Cracking little track there, of course, as well. And these Clio's always put on a show there. He was put on a show at every single track, never mind a track like Knock Hill. Speaking of upcoming events, the next event in the Touring Pro Series, after this one of course, is the Virtual V8 Supercars 2013 Championship and they are visiting their penultimate round of the season and the final round where you will, will be driving by yourself because the round is round 9 of 10 at Sydney Olympic Park with Jesper Torborg champion elect in that championship after the seeming um, uh, con con concession 
by uh, Jeffrey Rietveld in that championship. But make sure to tune in for that on the 10th of August. Always produces good stories of Sydney Park. In 2011, when we first ran it, Adrian Holm almost won his very first TPS race in his very first race of the season. And he was leading going to the final lap and uh, unfortunately gave it away uh, with a mistake at uh, one of the chicanes. And then last season, Adrian Holm was again challenging for the race win, but it was Toby Davis who ended up taking his first ever virtual V8 supercars win, if you can believe that, in 2012, at the, right at the end of the season. So, uh, Sydney Park, lovely, lovely circuit, lovely, lots of character, street circuit, difficult. Make sure you tune into that because that will be a classic race as well. And of course, after that, Scott, we've got Bathurst to go to, Mount Panorama, Bathurst 500. Co-drivers are required, and you're not allowed to have a co-driver uh, from within the series. You can't have a co-driver. You can't say put Jesper Torborg and Toby Davis together, or uh, in the case of uh, Precision, or Jeffrey Rietbelt and Sammy Kilo together. They has to be somebody from outside the series who hasn't competed in more than two races. So uh, drivers like Visa Muller and Keithy will be uh, very much uh, in demand for that, those co-driver roles there, and they're very they're important parts of the uh, of the of of the, uh, the, the virtual big supergirls and that um, of that race, of that event, sorry, should I say. And it happens uh, at the end of every season of every v virtual V8 supercar season. We've gone there for the fourth time last season. It was um, uh, uh, Jeffrey, um, not Jeffrey, but sorry, Jack Keithley and Peter Davilar who took the win for Precision Motorsports, a dominant performance. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing who teams up with who at that event. Some big rumours, Scott, that Jack Keithley will team up with Eric Strana for that event. Well, I was hearing rumours that um, it was going to be—he would be going with Jeffrey Reitveld because, of course, of course, that would that makes sense because they're both precision guys. But that's what they're, apparently they're expecting to go with. But, if but Jeffrey Reitveld, of course, are withdrawn from the championship. So, are we? Are, are we there's no Jeffrey Reitveld to to, uh, to 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 team up with anymore? Hmm. Well, I t well, if that's the case, Strana and Keithley is going to be, yeah, that's going to be a very formidable. Uh, duo to go up against and uh, it'd be pretty intriguing but, but of course that means you know of course Strana effectively he's an ice cold racing driver I don't know how, how they're going to work that of course because they both run uh, in different teams of course ice cold for Strana of course Keithy for precision so either one's going to either one team's going to have to give permission for the other to allow their driver to take part in the other team so that's going to be quite intriguing how it plays out but of course you know the main the, the main reason the main you know the main point of the whole event is, of course, it is Bathurst. You know who doesn't love Bathurst? It's it's a circuit which has been around for so long. It is effectively it is a mecca for touring car racing. It's pretty much you know the Bathurst 1000 in real life is probably the most famous touring car race in the world. It's probably if you think touring cars and people say what is the ultimate touring car race, people will probably say Bathurst 1000. You know it's been through the years, of course, of the production cars. Then you got the kind of the Group A days, you know, with the Nissan GTRs and your Ford Sierra Cosworth, and then you, they went back to the big V8s. Even even a, a time when they had two Bathurst 1000s for a couple of years, when they ran the V8 and the Super Tourers, they had two separate races, which is fantastic, which is amazing. Um, but of course, that kind of died out after a couple of years, and they went back mainly to the V8. So that's always going to be a great spectacle. Um, if I'm able to be around, I'd love to be around in some context of the two, to be around to. Oh, come can't with you for three hours in the broadcast, there, three or four hours in the broadcast, gone. No. no chance. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, I'll leave now then, shall I? Don't <laughs> <laughs> be right. Kidding. Shut the door after you, please. Scott. <laughs> uh, Toby <Bang>. Davis. <laughs> Slab. Toby Davis is out on track at the moment. We're in the qualifying session here, as you can see. So, getting to what's happening on track at the moment. Toby Davis, after a poor qualifying session, had a decent race in the end and was matching Salo's pace at the front of the field. Remember, especially the latter half of that race, it was 8.6 seconds for about <laughs> six, seven laps in a row was the gap between the two. So, Davis has got the speed to win a race here or definitely get on the podium. He just needs a good qualifying session. And, of course, this is the lap where he has to set it because it's super pole qualifying. You must only set one lap here. One out lap, one hot lap, and one in lap. So Davis now comes in the corner as much as he dares through there. You don't want to hit you don't want to hit the, that with your wheels that final curve. You want to hit it kind of the inside with your wheels. So then you, you don't tip the tower too far and it's a one ninety nine from Toby Davis. That's a much improved effort from him, I have to say, because he was a twenty point three remember next that last time around. And the pole was at nineteen seven with a nineteen eight in second. So that's gonna put Toby Davis right up there, Scott. That's exactly what he wanted compared to his uh, qualifying one effort. That's much, much better for you. He absolutely should be um, delighted with that effort. Let's see what Flores Strauss has got in the bag. Of course, he qualified down the field as well. Let's see if he's got any potential to move up from the field. 
So if I look at the time, possibly not. It's going to be a 120 something. Shepard goes second, 19.926. So hopefully he doesn't set another lap time this time yes. around. But uh, Strauss, uh, that's a poor lap from him. Yeah, at the th yeah. he's only fifth, 120.8. So I think that's near a 121. So. Yeah, I think definitely something he'll he'll be hoping for a little bit more. Um, look at some more guys that have just headed out. I see Jesper Tolborg is out. I see Eric Strauss setting a lap as well, going to start a lap as well. Jimmy Hughes is also out on track two, and Darren Adams is as well. Uh, so we'll have to watch out for those guys. Because Jesper Tolborg to be one of the key ones. Uh, I can't see at the moment. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any position cars out there just yet, or we're not well to see like when I rotated already. through. So just yeah, Eric Strauss, so the top runners out on track at the moment. Yeah, so he's now heading off onto his lap. Let's see what his first sector throws up. Answer to that question is, as he heads through to the first sector, it should be coming up soon somewhere. Oh, look at that, up by almost a tenth and a half. So Strahler's on it at the moment. We said he was the fourth man. He actually said a 1.19.6 in practice. So it is possible to go quicker than the pole time we set so far before. And he was the only man to get into, a, in, into the 1.19.6s. So Strahler, as he winds it through Brundle and the brakes for Nelson, straightens it up and then it takes a little time to curve, avoiding the inside curb through there, heading towards the end of the second sector, which would be right on the run between Bombhole and Corum, it should be. Towards the split. A bit coming up here, and he's still he's up still a tenth and a half up. Great lap so far, isn't it? He is indeed. So Eric Strana, we said he's been pretty electric so far with the podiums and victories he's taken. Can he also now follow it up with a pole position in rate for race two? He'll now go, he'll drive over the line. How much straight line speed does that ice cold racing Cleo have? Eric, Eric, left, Eric stays at left. Oh, not, that's not the shortest run. He's going to the middle, but that's enough. I guess as it is. Yes, oh, what a lap for a lap. What a lap for a lap. And he, found, and he found seven hundredths of a second in that final sector. So that's an incredible effort from Strana then. So a 1.19.6 was possible, and he's managed to pull it out of the bag from nowhere. Great stuff from the Swede. Who is on a hot lap at the moment that's uh, one of the quick guys? Um, sorry to <laughs> just skip over some people, but uh, we're obviously looking at the front here, and it's Jesper Tolborg who is one of the drivers down the track at the moment. And I think he was around about three tenths down that first sector. Then, if I, my eyes didn't deceive me, he's coming through uh, Brundle and Nelson. Now he's going to come towards Bombhole, and then we'll see the split after Bombhole. When I was a kid, I did think the Bombhole was called something else. Yes, uh, I, you I, make, I make up, you make up your you own mind about that one. one. You weren't the only one. <laughs> so three tenths down again is Jesper. So uh, I don't think he's going to be uh, taking any pole position here, but he may be up in the top five when the session is ended. But three tenths actually will pop him uh, just around about Chris Shepard at the moment, just behind him, ahead of Darren Adams. Adams has got a good qualifying there. He's had people like Rodriguez and Amaral. Richards also has got a decent one there, 20.5. But we're looking to see those times come, uh, those uh, positions be knocked right down as Jesper Tolborg, 20.088. And that's a good lap time. It's four tenths off, look at that, but it's still a great lap time from Jesper. That shows how special that lap was from Eric Strana. Most indeed, but we still have the likes, of course, of the Precision Boys to make their lap times. Larrison's down by, look at that, almost half a second. So Larrison's is not having a happy time out there on this second oh, ball. Great the really rotated the car beautifully there at the final corner, you know. That Absolutely. Was so Absolutely, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's not easy for these, to rotate these cars that easily uh, through the corners as Larrison drives to the line, and that was going to put him oh, any fifth, 20.1. So that's 50, almost half a second off there. So that is not probably a lap he was hoping for. Not happy as we look at Mike Bell. Again, duck and cover. Anyway, uh, Chris Butcher. <laughs> Chris Butcher. Even the cameraman right. avoid. Oh, look uh, at Mike. this. Oh, very Butcher's quick indeed, Chris Butcher. Butcher's found some pace. He did set a 1.19.7 in practice. So Butcher. He's always been said wax lyrical about the fact he hates these clears, but he has found a lot of pace here now. As he's now heading out of Murray's and sprints from the line. So, can Chris Butcher finally get something to smile about in this season? And a really tough championship here in the top ones of the Gold Clear Series. Has he, can he put a smile on his face at some point? Answer is, yes he can. Second, that's a great one. 119.7, he'll be delighted with that. So, Strana and Butcher on the front row provisionally with just under three minutes to go. Still got the likes, of course, of uh, Jack Keaton to set a time. And, of course, and, and, and Simon Kilov as well. And John Monroe too. So, we'll wait for those guys to come through. And also, I think John Monroe is out on the track. So is so Chris Hack. Whereas Masala is not out on track yet. Keith is on his lap at the moment, I can see as well. Uh, Kilov is still in the pit, so I guess he's possibly uh, waiting for the last opportunity moment to be one of the last cars out on pit. As Monroe really is struggling. Look at that. Oh, just under over eight and so and a half much with that as well. Look at that. His car bouncing all over the place and there as well. Oh, that looks absolutely shocking there from John Monroe. That car does not look pleasant at all to drive, Scott. He unders it all the way through Corum and he's bouncing around, bouncing around, unders it then through the final corner as well, still bouncing around. 
and crosses the line back in 19th. And that's not surprising considering the behaviour of that car through those particular corners. That was that was horrible to be on board with. I was almost closing my eyes. It wasn't impressive, was it? Munro is still not a fan of these clothes, and you can prosper. That's probably one of the reasons why, because you just can't get a solid setup. Where did Jack Keithley go? We got him just missed his 11th Jack Keithley. So, oh dear. he's a long way down, and he is right in the mid pack, and that's not where you want to be in Cleo's, is it, Scott? No, but Larison has gone sixth, though, so that's the top position car at the moment. But Keithley's certainly giving himself a challenge for this second race. Whether he, I can't really fathom if it, I can't really believe he's done that on purpose. He obviously must have made a mistake somewhere uh, to cause that. But um, a few more cars coming out to set their laps. Now there's Nick Hughes on his lap, 1.3 seconds off pole. Kevin Enderman's out there trying to repeat his race one qualifying. Thomas Jacobs is also in there making his way through Brundle Nelson and through the short squirt towards the bomb hole. And uh, let's see. It's amazing when you see some of these guys, how much lock they put on these and how much the wheel turns as uh, Jacob's doing a bit better than uh, Hughes back then. That was, uh, he's now about almost, you know, half as quick as he's, he's, I'm getting Get your words out, Scott. <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's, he's one, compared to 1.4, he's only eight tenths off, so he's pretty much, he's about half, half quicker than what Hughes was managing. So Jacobs now will drive from the line. Where will this put him? He's going to be at 21, I think. No, 20.9, 21st on the well, grid. Well, you're right about the 21 there, Scott. Yes. Yes, it's absolutely. Just 21st spot, look. No, excellent. 21st. Very, very, good, see, uh, very good predictions yes. there. I can see Chris Hack gone into 10th position. And a few more cars coming through. Strana's still on pole. So White will come start. That's a way to now for Skilov and Salo and to and Enderman to finish their laps now. I so don't Salo's know if Salo's going to... Oh, he's not going to be able he's to start his fine. lap. He's cutting it fine. I think he had problems getting out of his pit garage in the end, uh, actually. He's not going to make it. He's not not going to make it. Well, you've got an, a, a grace of about five seconds after the, the, the clock takes past zero, so it's going to be very, very no. close indeed. He's going to be at zero now. I'm going to bet One, he's not going to make it. Two, but Kilo. Three, four. No, he hasn't made it. He's just, just going to miss out of the line. As you said, Kilov, absolutely flying. So Kilov could possibly put in a last gasp effort to take pole position. Right. He could, and he's flying around the circuit at the moment. Using all the track through Brundle. He's kicked up a little bit of dust on the exit, and now he's heading through the bomb hole. That's the Cambron, and how the elevation changes through that. It's the only corner has got that much elevation change. And, and he's still this. this is terrible stuff from half. Kilo. This is going to be a super lap. I think it looks like it's going to be the quickest lap of the weekend so far. Quickest in practice was a one. Oh, he's on the the final corner. I think he's lost it, you know. I think I've just got a sneaky suspicion he'll be second here. I think he's just understood a bit too much of that final corner. Oh, he's got cut across the line a little bit too much there as well. Not need to do that really, Simon. He really can't get you anything and uh, get you disqualified. And he did lose it, but oh. he's third in the end. Oh, that was that final corner. Just understeered. It's so, so difficult, that final corner. And Eric Tvike goes into ninth. Will Sarlo get this lap finished? I think he will. Nip and tuck, Possibly. I think. But usually, it's, um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but usually you can, uh, as Wynn Jones is still out on track and uh, he will be disqualified as well because he's setting too many, lap time, uh, too many lap times here at the moment. This is going back into the pits. Uh, Sala then driving towards the line. Will he get it? Will it change session? Look out for the change session. He's not going to do it. He is going to do it. He is going to do it. And 13th, 13th spot. He'll be, thankfully, just even on the grid after that. Uh, so from you. pole to 13th, but at least he's on the grid. And I can tell you, apparently, a message from Tommy O'Yala, because of course he is a THR driver now. Apparently, Rasmus had a car in front of his pit box, which is yes, he, I, he I, push I, out thought, of the I way. saw that in the background. So I, I think Chris Butcher was trying to move that car out of the way for him. <laughs> yeah. So there is the grid, Scott. <laughs> yes. Let's take you through how they're going to line up for the second race here at Snesterton. And Eric Strana, the man on form right now, continuing that run of fantastic results with a pole position here in the second race at Snesterton as they head up warm up then. The last four minutes. Chris Butcher, how about that? A dreadful season. Comes to Snesterton, goes into race two qualifying, pops it on the front row. Great job, Butchie. Great stuff. Row two, Simon Keelov with a he cost me could have taken pole position. He was a tenth and a half in that up in that second sector and just lost out under breaking through Coram and Murray's. And Toby Davis will join him on the second row. Much better qualifying. He needs that to try and gain a few more points. I think he's pretty much out of the championship hunt, but any more points he can grab on precision definitely help him and THR Orange in the team's championship. Fifth, and actually starting this race this time, didn't do too many laps, let's let him for the first session. Chris Shepard will start on row three. Another cat amongst the pigeons with Jesper Talwalk sixth. So not too bad for Talwalk, another top ten qualifying. Eric Tavite will start seventh again. Better qualifying for Tavite. 
and Laritz has dropped back to eight. Adams up in ninth, and Pepe Rodriguez rounds out the ten for this race. Thomas Matazewski in eleven, with Chris Hack in twelve. A bit disappointed for Chris, I think, because he wasn't as high as he as he was before for race one. Rasmus Salo, not pole position this time. He has to have to settle for thirteenth. Only just got in there. And Jack Keith, the championship leader, he's going to have a monster of a task from four. Well, not that much of a monster task, but it's going to be a challenge anyway from 14th on the grid back on row seven. Row eight is going to be Scott Sovic and Pedro Amaral again. Not as quick as he has been before the past couple of races. He's going to have a challenge from 16th on the grid. Going down to row nine. If good. There we go. Yeah, Thank sorry about that. Much. <laughs> it's okay. Just doing admin in the background as well as compensating. Multitasking. No, no, of Multitasking. I need, I need a secretary, I think. Can you get me a secretary, please, Scott? Um, do you want to be I'll my secretary, Scott? Well, how much are you going to pay me? Well, <laughs> it depends if you wear a pencil skirt or you don't wear a pencil skirt. Pencil skirt's not my thing, unfortunately. So, well, uh, you're not going to pay, pay very much, then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think Scott's in the stunt silence. Thank you, anyway, um, Leonard and Richards. Ted's going to get his Hughes and Powell. Carry yeah. on, Scott. And uh, Yes, um, so as you said, Leonard and Richards are frozen the night. <laughs> everyone everyone go on Scott's Facebook page and picture him in no, a pencil skirt. No, don't do that. <laughs> Scott Woodwiss, W-I-S-S <laughs> on Facebook. And with that, I resign. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, anyway, row 11. Lee Farmer and Thomas Demelin on row 11. 22nd there for Demelin. Florian Strass down in 23rd. Again, he really is struggling. Kevin Enderman down in 24th after his great qualifying in for race yeah, one. It's Thomas a very different grid, isn't it? This time around to last time mm. around. Top he dropped a row back in 26th. So. Yeah, he's really not happy with that. He looked in 13th at least last time. I think he will be happy with the top 15 at least if he can manage it. <laughs> will uh, be from Mike there Bell, now. Mike Bell, 27th, duck and cover. Um, <laughs> Jay Hadjik, well, well, might have crossed the line on fire in his first race. God knows what he's going to state. His car's going to be in the end of race two. If he makes it to the end of race two. No, I'm kidding, Matt. I'm, I'm, kidding. Course. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, Matt, of course. And Jay Hadjik in 28th position. Luca Pecklau is 29th. And Lukas Demelin in 30th. Cameron Brewster, a bit higher than his first qual. Point. He started back, back of the grid. He's 31st this time. Nick Hughes, 32nd. Matt Evans, 33rd. David Carter, 34th. Andy Bernard, 35th. Uh, Apparently no one in 36. The 36. I think that maybe that it was James. Oh no, it's Tony Matthews in fact actually. Tony yeah. Matthews. There we go. Tony Matthews, and that means 37 is going to be John Osterclin. 38. If we scroll down, there should be some more cars on the grid. If no, there that's, is. Uh, that's everyone. Just 38 oh, that's it. qualifiers. So 38 cars on the grid there. So yeah. Pretty decent field. Uh, tops of Turvey again, but we've now got this time what we didn't have in race one, which is we've got the likes of Chris Butcher and Chris Shepard in there to, uh, and also Toby Davis, who is now not out of position like he was last time. So those three are going to really make this race interesting. And also an out of position Jack Keithy down at the bottom of the t in 13th, 14th place on the grid. So he's going to have a try and try to charge up through the field. I've got confidence in Jack. I think he probably will. But I know the likes are probably strong. track is very busy, isn't it, Scott? In this warm-up, it's not usually this busy during warm-up. Look at everyone who's is yeah. charging around the circuit. Yeah, well, of course... Some people even their pit stops. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, obviously, I'm pretty sure they're expecting there's going to be a... Carambolage down towards turn one, which is going to be really something they're going to have to watch out for. I'm uh, going to uh, say there's going to be fireworks in this race. Fireworks, yes. even more than yes. last race, because Jack yes. Keith will be way down, and people will be attacking him left, right, and centre. He'll have to use his nous very much here, but he's in a really dangerous position because he's right in the middle of the pack. That's the worst place to be because if you, you can get hit from behind, you can catch things in front of you. At least if you're at the back of the car, you don't have to worry about the essential personnel. And also, 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 you have to make, bear in mind as well is that remember who's alongside him on row seven, Rasmus Salo. So it's going to be oh, first, the guys who finish first. <laughs> rejoin their battle. <laughs> it's going to continue again, albeit they'll be starting on the seventh row. So those guys watch them for fighting through. Salo seems to have found some race pace this time. So that's pretty good for him to get that. Like as we said a few times now, didn't have any in Silverstone. Marched towards the back of the top ten and outside of it. So he's now managed to find something in the setup. So it'll be pretty intrigued to see how he gets on on that occasion. Uh, Peter Rodriguez in there as well. I'm seeing Chris Hacks also out of position. He's down in twelfth. Also, like to Florian Strauss, not really, not really having a good time here at Sneston. He's right down the field, in back in the twenties, down, down, down below in the high twenties on the grid. So that's really not something he, he, would, he will appreciate as the cars head off for their formation. That, but Strana now has a real good chance to take his third victory of the season here. Butcher's, Butcher, I would love to see Butcher take a really good result. He had a really tough time this season, um, which is odd because he, he didn't. Do, he's done pretty well in the, in the minis and was in the championship hunt between him and teammate Robert Wiesman on the road. 
Visma won out in the end on that occasion. But but he's never really taken to the clears this season. Of course, we always, as we said, he's been very vocal about the fact he detests these clears. He seems to have found some liking to this. Well, he wasn't the, the biggest fan of the, of, the, of the previous clears either. To, let, no. Let's be frank about that. Chris isn't the biggest fan of anything, that's, to be honest. Everyone <laughs> knows him. Knows him. <laughs> so we take any, any that criticism he has, we just take with a pinch of salt. That is true. That is true. I apologise uh, for the Keon. line there. Just trying to get a good shot of the field, but because uh, there's so many cars, yes. the uh, it's, it's just not showing them cars as they get further and further away. So apologies for that. I'm just trying to get a nice cinematic shot and failing completely. Any more drives we're looking at? Uh, Eric Tavai up in seven. He could possibly to uh, make one of his surprises. Ran in the top ten. Malisevsky had, had a much better qualifying this time around. He Absolutely. Was like in 25th, and fifth, I think, in the first qualifying. And Darren Adams too. He's in the, in the top ten as well. Just had a Pepe Rodriguez. So, as we said. Race Very different, isn't it? Grid. Very different field it does. Well, that's, that's, that seems to be a, a pattern we're getting with race two grids. They always seem to have people out of position or a surprise pole sitter. Of course, Strana's on form, so it's not really surprised to see him on pole position. But Butcher up there in second, we said. A lot of people who have struggled in the season, haven't done so well in the past few races, now coming good. Well, it's near, near the end of the season. It seems to be that case where you do get some drivers who they struggle at the beginning, they're trying to get used to the car and the characteristics and get a feel for the rest of the pack. And then once they get that feel, they, towards the end of the season, they start to come on strong. You start to, start to see them in their true colours, start to see them really get some speed out of their car. And they, it kind of has put, gives them a bit of a warning shot for future series, because they think, well, if I'm strong at the end of this series, and we're going to be using similar, if not the same cars as we're going to be for the next season, I'm almost certainly possibly going to be a contender, because I'm coming on strong pretty much at any end point of the season. I've learned quite a lot from, from other drivers, the rest of the team, and learned a lot about the car and the circuit. So. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely fascinating to watch these guys to come through. The key man, of course, to watch him, Jack Keithley and Rasmus Sala, coming through from, the, from row seven. Those two are going to absolutely have fireworks as the cars come onto the grid. Well, yes, but Torvald and Toby Davis will be fingers crossed that somebody oh, yeah. T-bones Jack Keithley straight into the arm going out of the race. In, in all fairness, they don't want him to, to, to crash, really, but in, from a selfish point of view, you know, they do kind of want that to happen. Um, yes. but of course, we don't want to see that. Pepe Rodriguez is in top ten as well, but he missed out in the first race because of a, a technical problem with his with his game. So uh, it's nice to see that he's on the grid this time around. Absolutely. Um, I think, every, I think everybody's out on track. But I saw a gap. There's a gap here somewhere. Oh, we're actually about to start this race. So let's go back to the front of the field. There, are the lights there in front of you. Left hand side there. Lights are on. And lights are out, we're on green, and away we go, it's a good start there from Butcher once again on that uh, left row. It seems to be quicker, but uh, Strahan's got enough. Excuse me, sorry yeah. to carry on. Absolutely, down towards turn one, looks like the final challenge of the second as Toby Davis tries to have a look around the outside. And I just saw, I think I was to Vite, and they're three wide out of Butcher's corner in the background. That's between, it looks like, to Vite, Shepard and Larritz as they head down towards Montreal for the first time as Davis getting up the inside of Keelov into the pit, into the hairpin. And Tarwell's going to mix in there as well as... Look at that, Keelhoff takes towards the grass. And back and shoves there, Toby Davis. The first that was time. Is that someone in the it? background? Yep, yeah, off in the back. I think it was Pedro Amaral. And they're scrapping between that Shepard and Tobias. And also, I think, Maritson. As we see Keelhoff getting very defensive down towards turn one. And Strata's getting his head extra butcher. As they scrape down towards Brunton and Nelson for the first time. And they're side by side. It was three and rest down towards the complex, right? Oh, and Shepard going around the outside of Eric Tobias. Almost got shot off the track. And now uh, Davis going past Kilo. And, and Tarbo. So yes, but Tarbo. Down the, down the inside. Oh, oh Tavite! Tavite is sideways. He's gone across the track. Oh, you know what? Hard. Oh, Tavite. That's the end of his race. And Lawrence was involved there as well. Look at Jack Keith. He's right in the middle of this. He does not want to be. He wanted to see any of that at all. Let's watch on the replay because that was spectacular stuff there from Eric Tavite. Here we go. Oh, he's come across on Alexander Lawrence, who already, look, you see, had the oh. line. And there goes Eric Tavite, and it spins back across and will hit the barrier behind us. Just get a quick shot of behind, and there he is, and that will be pretty much the end of Eric Tavite's race because he hit that barrier very hard. And there comes Lennon through the dust around outside yep. of everybody. But Ryan, Big move from here. So he got to go back to the front, but it's a challenge for the lead into the monster all there, but he's got the inside run. Strauss giving him enough room. And Butcher's done it! So Butcher into the lead, I think possibly the first time this year, in fact. First time in this season, Chris Butcher leads in the Tom Onslow Cold Clear series. How about that? He gets bad luck all season long, and on lap two of the second race of Sneston, he's into the lead. Good job, Butchie. Yeah, he hasn't won a race in the Tom Onslow Cold Clear series this season. So unlike him, he usually gets a win uh, here and there in, in the Clio's. And plenty, of course, remember in the Virtual Mini Challenge. In fact, won more races than Robert Wiesenmuller. In, in, in that uh, Thomas and the uh, Virtual Mini Challenge season, but did not take the championship. That was consistent to Wiesenmuller, 
and also technical problems as well. In fact, the same technical problems that beset him in the, in the last race where his monitor switched off, that was confirmed as, the, as a result, as, a, as the cause of him going off the track. Monitor switched off, had to switch the monitor back on again, but obviously by the time he had done that, his car was damaged. So, but again, that uh, afflicted him in the virtual mini challenge as well, and basically cost him the championship, so uh, that's not great for uh, Chris Butcher at all, but he's back in the lead of this race now and extending that gap over Eric Strahan. Three guys I want to point out have had absolutely cracking starts. One of course is, looking at it, was Jack Keithy, but two guys I want to note is that if you look back at the front, look who's in seventh place, Pipa Rodriguez, and in eighth place, Rasmus Salo. What a start from the race Fantastic one winning, up there in eighth position. And who's that in the foreground? That's Chris Shepard. 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 I think he was Shepard. Yes. He's dead, of course, it's his first race. He didn't get a chance to race for race one because he did too many laps in qualifying, and that means he's now getting a chance to have a real proper taste of the Tom Under the Cole Fios. And doing well for Holland in sixth place, keeping with Simon Kilov as they head down the Bentley straight for the third time of 19 in the second race. The back we're now looking at Chris Hack, who is down in 14. Just got past Pedro Moral on the line, I think. Yeah. So ha Hack's moved his way forward. Where he's lost qualified place, lost to Chris start. Hack. He's dropped some positions, hasn't he? Yeah, he, he qualified as well, and he's now down in 14. So not a good start for Chris. Probably got caught up with, with maybe one or two incidents, so just purely didn't get a good start. I wouldn't have, would have thought. And now looking back, that is Nick V. Palmer. And now we've got Mike Bell defending from Florian Strauss. Head into with Mike Bell and Strauss together, that's not good. Anybody who remembers Lime Rock last season with Mike Bell and Strauss together, that caused the biggest crash in Turing oh, Pro yes. Series history at Lime Rock. Anybody wants to check that out? That was uh, <laughs> an incredible crash right over the crest of a hill. So the drivers who were coming along in fifth gear, absolutely flat. Oh, and a bit of lag there. Oh, quite a bit of lag here. Are we on, are we on, uh, on a replay? But not on replay, in fact, actually. Oh, oh, oh Strauss got there, but Strauss, but, uh, No, but, uh, Strauss goes wide. So Strauss went, just went wide, it wasn't like in the end actually, Strauss just went straight on, so that's not good for Strauss at all. Way back in the field once again, and after his stellar, oh he's actually lost the front of his car now as well, so that's not good at all from there. Uh, for his Strauss, we'll leave him to his, uh, to his troubles. And I've also noticed. The field. That's the back from Strauss, wasn't it? So he's right behind Butcher again. I did notice quickly, just as we look at the, the battle, I did notice, I think, John Monroe back in 27, he looks like he's lost his front bumper as well, so it looks like he's been involved in an instant or oh, two. Oh Yes, yeah, not good fortune for to John this season, really, but that's uh, rather unfortunate. Back to the lead, though. And Butcher now is once again trying to pressure with Strana. Strana almost trying to get inside. Oh, Morse code Literally in the back inside. of uh, Tap, 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 tap. I'm yep. here, I'm here, I'm back here. Look who these, this battle is. It's THR Orange versus Precision once again. And we've seen this plenty of times this season so far, but it's only Kilo this time around. And Shepard is losing ground in the race pace, of, of uh, you know, in terms of race pace in this, in this race in terms of race pace in this event because uh, obviously he's never raced his cars before it's very different once you're in the zone of the race things are very different to, to, to like when, when it's all perfect conditions when you're practicing even if you do race you know race runs and race laps not around other drivers but Jack Heathley has got a nice gap in behind him back to, oh no it's just a bit of lag as the drivers were, were missing and um, obviously a big strain on the circle right now and we oh what have we lost there oh it's okay Jack Heathley just uh, jumped forward to the, to the first then but uh, it wasn't actually uh, real, just a timing glitch there as Chris Butcher just about holding off Eric Strong there. Eric Strong looks hungry to get past, but he's not being overly aggressive right now. He knows he's got a little bit of time because he's got a second gap on Toby Davis in behind, who you know is going to have difficulty catching up and making that position. Yeah, and whilst we watch that, and obviously you watch this battle now, because we've got third and fourth for two THR orange guys with Davis and Tobble. This is going to be crucial for the team's championship as in front. Strana dives down, he's going to go on the inside and Brundley on the outside run for Nelson. Oh, beautiful move there from Strana and Butch has no response. Strana covered the inside line perfectly and that is the pulse that's back into the lead of the race. Just behind the two THR orange cars defending from Simon Kilov in fifth. Chris Shepard is sixth and look at this, Pipo Rodriguez is starting to get a train forward behind him with Alexander Larratz in the first car challenging. And then we've got Rasmus Sala who's now dropped a place. The last time I saw him he was in eighth. He's dropped a position now and he's now under pressure from Gary Lennon. We are the Scotsman, and it was intriguing. I was speaking to Gary then before the race, and he was saying to me, and I can quote this directly, I think, I can find the, the quote from him. He said, to sit back and watch the magic. So that's a direct quote from Gary then. Sit there. back and watch the magic. Yes, well, indeed. Well, Gary Rodriguez not going to be out that corner at all. It looks like he missed the gear on then, because uh, Lawrence had to dip out from under him quite quickly. And Lawrence now has the inside into Riches, but the outside can work also. Lawrence is right across the inside of the turn on the grass. It's not going to help him at all because he's very bumpy on the grass. And it didn't at all. Look at that. Because uh, Rodriguez just held the position. But now down the inside comes Lawrence. And yes, he, he should does. take it this time around. Oh, with Salo. Oh. Well, hello, people. Hello. <laughs> Don't go too slow around the corner because I'm here as well, mate. 
Oh, and look at look at Keith Lee. Keith Lee's now got a great run now on Lennon up the up the Bentley straight. No slipstream. And even though Lennon has won, Keith Lee's still pulling alongside. This is great stuff, a great exit from the championship leader. And Lennon's just forcing him across. He's thinking, no, come on. Won it, and he's outbreaking him as well. And Lennon just sweeps across. It looks like Keith Lee backed out of that, not taking too many risks. But of course, it effectively, he wants to try and stop Davis and Tobol from closing in too much, he's going to have to take a couple of risks because he's only in 11th place. Now, if I'm correct looking at how the points go down, 11th will only net him 25, no, 20, 29 points at the moment. And we've got Toby in third, he'll get 45, and Tumble will get 43. So effectively, he's, effectively, if you look at this, he's almost losing double the points to the two guys in front. As you see, there's something in the air, that? but it's probably working here, yeah, I think. Something the track yeah, there is just a uh, nice view of the action here. <laughs> yes, it's probably one of those, um, those drone things where we get an extra camera view, but unfortunately we don't have that, unfortunately. I don't know what the hell it is. Oh, Lennon's oh, got one thousand deep, and Jack Keithley will be straight to the Thank you very Ooh. much for the mistake there from Jack. Oh, Jack did. Oh, mistake there yeah, from Gary. Is. Jack didn't give you exactly any room there to Gary, did he? Come back on, just make sure that uh, the Scotsman was uh, right out of the way. Very look, at the lock they have put on that, look at the lock they have to put on that corner as well. As you come around there, you see how, how much the wheel was turned out, out of the wheel arches there from Jack Keith. Just to get around that hairpin, it's such a tight, tight hairpin. Back at the front of the field, Strana is pulling away from Chris Butcher, but Toby Davis is gaining on Chris Butcher. So that is the deal. It's all very spread out, in fact, actually. All very tame this second race. I did predict that we'd have, have a, few, uh, a, few, a few shenanigans, but it's not been the case at all. No, impressive stuff for Chris Shepard, quite a few cars running quite next to the bomb while they're all doing that, kicking out the dust. But great run for Chris Shepard so far, holding on to Simon Keelov in sixth position, pulled yeah, away slightly got, almost got a second wind, hasn't he, in this race, because he, he has. was back early on, but he's and now doing very well. peg the gap and pull back in on Kilo. We've lost a couple of cars, I can see we've lost Luke for this race, we've lost Lucas Demelin, Luca Pecklash, Florian Strauss, we've lost a really disastrous weekend for him. And Matt, Re and Matt Richards as well. So we lost four cars already. So we started the race with what, 37 cars? And we're now, that of course, a lot less more than that, in fact, because we've lost also Eric Tavite as well. With suspension there, that was on the first lap. Of course, he was out anyway. And Thomas Madazewski was out too. So we've lost six cars. Uh, looks like Matt Richards was a DNF. And Demelin and Strauss were by suspension. And Luke Peckman blew his engine sky high. So six cars out. And we've still got, as far as I can see, we've still got 31 cars to learn this race. We started obviously with the, yeah, 37. So Looking pretty good as we now look back at Jay Angie. That's Thomas Jacobs with a front bumper that's a six axis Clio under brakes. And that one, Dem that's uh, Thomas Demler getting past Thomas Jacobs. Or Dave, the Thomas, nope. the, the David, David Carter. Carter. Sorry. David Carter in the small racing car. Look at the smiley face on the front. You can tell it's a small racing car. And uh, I'm surprised that car's got the Mike Bell seal of approval. But of course, uh, it's not allowed on the car, I don't believe. So not, it's not yet, anyway. I know they were planning to try and do that, but uh, not until the. Uh, something else happens, so I can't really say what, but uh, under the brakes, under the bridge once again, and fantastic back to the back oh, of the field. Oh, Shepard's blown his engine, Shepard's gone. Shepard has blown his engine oh, from no. six spots. There we go, that's jumping down the green, see it. Oh, that's, that's it's just inexperience there, I say from Chris, because these cars, you know, can be a bit sensitive when you change down the gears. Maybe, uh, maybe you just put it into fourth, into first back, but uh, on, 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 you know, on first, uh, assessment you would say that's probably just a little bit of an experience and uh, just push a bit too hard in the race situation as Brewster having a big battle there with Powell side by side through Corum and Brewster had to go very very deep oh, and that's how oh, Powell Ryan, through. Ryan sorry switch to the front Davis into second sorry sorry to cut across there Ryan to switch from the back right. but Davis is up into second place he made said it was coming, the didn't we? He's made and we saw this last season look with the THR guys uh, Butcher Davis and Torborg lying a stone. We saw this last season at Stetton at this track. Different cars, of course, and of course, we're in different positions because it's Strana who's leading, not the other THR car. Absolutely. And uh, this means, of course, Talbog's now going to try and come with them, I would have thought. But Butcher's not letting, he's not letting Davis get away. That's for sure. But Davis, of course, seems to have the superior race pace of the THR cars at the moment. And now he's been released to try and chase after Strana. But Strana's setting quite a mighty pace. See both Talborg and Kilo, but they're using all the track and a little bit more on the outside as they kick up the dust, exiting the bo exiting the bomb hole around Cora, the long right hander as it tightens up to the very sharp left of Murray's back onto the pit right now for the end of the ninth lap. So we're now pretty much coming to half distance in this second race here at Snetterton, and it's still Eric Strahan that leads by number 1.9 seconds, but it's come down to 1.8. So. Jack Hitty's got past both Salo and Adams also as well while we've been uh, 
Yes, he's he has. Back, he's he's, he's back looking at Rodriguez now. Well, just Salah, in fact, actually. Just Salah. He's looking at Rodriguez now into Richie's corner up towards Montreal Hairpin. Now that he's got a good run here. When he now pulls to the inside, he's going to think about it. Yes, he's, he might just go for it. Rodriguez leaves the door wide open. But it's sensible driving from Jack, isn't he? Because he's yes. not going for moves that are 50 50. He's Absolutely. just going for moves that are, you know, 70 30 almost. You know, things that he's confident, you know, are going to come off. Looking back as well, I can see in the background, Chris Hack's back to where he started, started 12th position. So he's now chasing after Scott Sowick's in the back of Pedro Amaral's. That's a good run, isn't he? 11th see. spot, lonely, but a decent run. Yeah, Scott Sovic, yeah, very good stuff. Back in his normal blue and black livery, rather than his gold and black livery for his 100 races. He that he celebrated crop but had a nightmare weekend, so he decided to celebrate it at uh, Silverstone instead, properly. He managed to finish both races, which is uh, much, much better than he was expecting. As Talbot got past Butcher, and that was, I think, on the exit of the bomb hole, because he got through, I think, just, at least it just as they were coming into Corum. So the THR Orange oh, guys, got the second, the that's corner. A car, there's a car off. That's There's a Matthews car in the background there. Murray, Matthews. Tony Matthews, yeah. So yeah, Tony I think it must be because it's only a white it. car on, on the, in the field, I think, so it must have been Matthews. <laughs> Tony Matthews has parked it, in fact, he's waiting for, it to, for a, a sensible spot to rejoin, in fact. Yeah, in fact, he's two laps down, as you can see now as well, yeah. so he did really just go around and oh, lapped him. Mike so Bell Joining, sorry if it's not what we're seeing on the screen, Mike Brown very, very wide and uh, almost keeps it off the barriers there, but we'll leave that for now. We're back to the front, as we're seeing, and the gap's. 2.3 seconds now, so Strahan is turning the wick up on his ice cold clear now, he's really starting to pull the gap, get a gap back Absolutely now. Absolutely flying at the moment, isn't it? Of course, remember, he was yeah. stuck in that, we've seen it before, didn't we, at Silverstone, oh. stuck in the pack, it's so, so difficult for you to even, to, you know, to even, even get past, as Keithy, I think, has just slipped past yes, he has. Rodriguez on the exit That's what I was going to mention. Of, yeah, on the exit of, uh, of uh, Montreal and Sears. So Jack is now up to 7th spot and what was looking like Jack would have a poor result here is now turning into a very good result at the moment because he's up in 7th spot. If you just pull away, Rodriguez has got a nice buffer of a... Oh, hello, who's gone off the track there? It must have been Lauritsen because that's a, a hell of amount of dust right there. Couldn't see anything at all. It was choked. Jack uh, has, has now Lauritsen and, Ki and Kilo ahead of him. So if they do want to uh, run team orders and, let it, and, ask him to, and ask him to drop back, they can do so. We might even get a fifth out of this. I think that the worst, uh, I think the worst result Keith has had this season, which you know, basically shows why he's leading this championship, is fifth spot. He's been in the top five all season long, I believe. So that shows what it what it takes to win a championship in the Touring Pro Series. You have to be there, uh, race after race after race. And um, but it's at the moment it's ice cold at the front with THR, 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 and the precision, precision, precision in first, second, and third, uh, second, third, and fourth, and fifth, sixth, and seventh. But they're not at the front of the field like we've seen in the rest of the season, in fact, actually. Um, it's just been all about THR and precision. But only Eric Strahan has managed to, um, to break, really, that, uh, that, that um, monopoly at the front of the field. Of course, Sarlo is a brand new driver to THR, so you could kind of argue that uh, his win is not really a THR win. But it is. He's driving with THR now with THR set up, so um, that was also THR wins. But Eric Strahan is the only driver from outside the THR position camp to have uh, won a race this season. It looked like he's heading for his third one. Yeah, and also you've got to remember, of course, so, so, and also, this also counts for John Monroe as well. Those guys joined THR position respectively mid-season, which means that the rules state you can't score for more than one team, more than one team counting towards the team's championship, which means that you know, Salah and John, Rasmus and John can still score points for themselves in the drivers' championship. But any point points they score will not go to, towards, in Rasmus's case, THR Green, and in John's case, uh, Precision Motorsports. So those guys are racing, but clearly racing for themselves, points-wise. But of course, but it's, of course, but overall for the team, of course, they'll be there to try and support uh, their teammates and their sister teammates as much as possible. As Salo now looking at a pass, diving well, on the that's inside. That's an Ooh, that was ambitious. Ooh. And but Rodriguez as well to cover that well, as well. <laughs> I was about to say ambitious but rubbish, but that wasn't a rubbish pass because he uh, just dropped back and uh, had he, some sensible driving. And Keith Salah can see Keithley just pulling away, yeah. can't he? That's the oh, problem. Someone oh, someone Who's that? That's a position car. Who's that? Position car's pulled off. Who is that? Now, is, is that, that Lawrence? Is, 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 that, is that Monroe? Is it Monroe? It's Lawrence Kilo. It's Kilo. Kilo's pulled off. Is it Kilo? Out, Kilo's out of the race. What's happened to him? Due to, is that engine? Is that engine? Is that engine smoke? I can see rising. It might be engine. I think it. It is. Not. It is engine smoke rising. His engine the, has well. Oh dear. It might just be overheating because it's not come up with engine blown, has it? No, on, well, the, well, on the well, screen. Well, I can't. Well, I can't imagine he stopped there to wait for the car to cool because I've got no. He's out. Yeah. It is goes. the engine. There you go. Engine. The engine. Out of the, the race. Him out of the race. Wow. So Kilo and Shepard, both good friends, 
out of the race. Incredible stuff. With yeah, the same that's... issue. Yeah, that's, that's not something which uh, we were probably were expecting. But of course, I think Kilo. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna say you did that on purpose. Of course, why would you blow your engine on purpose? No, you wouldn't. Of course. Not. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that on purpose. <laughs> uh, you should, if you shouldn't really even think that. But of course, it does mean that Keith is now into sixth position. Next car ahead is. Oh, I see where you go with that logic. I see where you go with that logic. That's that's, that's interesting, Scott. Mm. Uh, but no, I don't think that. Well, that no, I, no. If it happened on the last lap, I would say. Yeah. Would be. A little bit more it, suspicious, but uh, it, no, it, no. It, it, crossed, it, crossed, it, it shot through my mind at the time at the time when that happened. But of course, I, I, as I said, why would you blow your engines deliberately? That, that's not something that would make sense. But Larrett himself is now involved in a fight with Butcher over four, but Butcher is just about holding on at the moment, doing well to hold on to for his best race of the season so far. So good job from Butcher, even though he started on the front row. So this is still going to be really decent points. In fact, Butcher himself in the championship, if you look at race, he's 21st. So. This result, fourth position, will earn him 43 points, which is actually not too bad. So he looks like he might leapfrog quite a few guys and may just crack break into the top, into the bottom and top 20, which is only, only a crumb of comfort for his poor season. As now we watch, this is Jimmy Hughes, Hughes, Hughes and, and uh, Lennon and Gary Palmer, Lennon. who's having a great run in Palmer, right up with one of his team leaders, Gary Lennon. And of course, remember, it's it's two two ice cold cars versus one walk racing car. So of course. Len's got back up in the form of Palmer, whereas you see Jimmy Hughes is doing it, he's going solo on this one, so we'll have to wait and see exactly how this plays out. They head through this long right hander of form. It used to be a short straight and then the almost more of a chicane through what was called Russell. Of course they're reprofiled into one long right hander and then an awkward, but then a very tricky breaking zone into what's now called Murray's, which they've tightened up. I miss Russell. I miss the late break that John Cullen used to make into there lap after lap. I, I remember Gabriel Tarquini in 1994 when he dived up the inside of Paul Radisic in the, oh, beautiful in, in, in the one, one, and only, one and only race they had those days. That, those are the days when you had some race weekends back in the BTCC where there's some race weekends you had one race and some when you had two and Seston you for a while. It always used to be the weekend where they had only had one. I think the last time they had that was, was actually 1994 I believe. Well, they went well it's, it, headers, it makes so. sense to have more races on the weekend, doesn't it? Because then you, you well, get more people come, turning up because there's more for them to watch. I, don't, I never yeah. got why there was only ever one race on the weekend. That uh, seemed a bit uh, nonsensical to me, but uh, they saw the light eventually. Oh, sorry, just seen Rodriguez just holding off side. They went side by side. That was over over sixth position. Yeah, there's a gap, the back uh, gap has appeared now between them, hasn't it? So they've yeah. obviously had a scuffle and the Hack has caught serving. Look how much he's caught him. He's absolutely flying, is Chris Hack at the moment. He's been laughing not too far off. The, uh, the leader's pace and oh, 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 second oh, oh, and third. Oh, hold on a second. Torborg has dropped down to seven. He has. What's happened to Torborg? He's got. We just got past him. What's happened there? So let's go back and replay. I thought replay. it was weird. There we I are. Saw that, I saw that Keithy was up to fifth. And I wonder oh, how. We won't be able to that. see it. We won't be able to see it. So Torborg has dropped back to eleven. That's not good news at all. Not sure what's happened there at all. That's not helping his championship the slightest. And we said it's championship over for Jesper Torborg. And of course, it would not help in Toby Davies either because Toby needs as many cars between him and Jack Keithy as possible. So yeah, it's just helping what, Jack over and over at the moment. It is. Well, well I saw that and I saw, I saw that he's up to fifth. But how has he done that? There must have been someone who's dropped down and had made a mistake. And I just spotted Tom was out of position. So that's what's caused it. And now Tom going to do it all over again. He's on laps, they're on laps 16 and 19 now. So he's got four laps to try and get past a few cars. He's got a train of cars headed by Darren Adams. No, that's Adam is getting like faster Rodriguez. and faster here, I think. He's just, uh, just inching up on the, the, this battle with Sal and Rodriguez. He's getting stronger and stronger as this race goes on. Hack dro drove right at the back of Serbic and has dropped back once again. So I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe he's had a, a, a dig for an overtake and it's gone wrong. But Adams is looking a bit threatening, I have to say. He is indeed doing a fantastic job. And of course, teammate Hack is back in 10th position. Of course, he'll be killed from the pressure, I'm sure from Esmer Talbot because they decided to go a bit of rally crossing and put two wheels on the edge of the track and the exit of the bomb hole and a lot of drivers have done all race weekend long and you can't really miss Chris Hack's car, he always likes to have a pink oh. car of course it's... Adam's uh, looking threatening, looking at that run out of the final corner, it was very accurate Absolutely. Absolutely. was pushing a bit too hard to try and keep up with uh, Rodriguez ahead of him who's pulled away once again so Rodriguez has got a bit of a second win so and we're just holding him off, lap 17 and 19, remember we're near the end of this race, not seen too much of Eric Strahm because he's been so superb at the front of the field. Oh, Adams, go down the inside here, no, not close enough, definitely not close enough. And Torbo right at the back of this battle now as well, so that's going to make very interesting final few laps with this group. Let's quickly check in on Lauritsen and Butcher, they're quite close as well, mm. not close enough for an overtake, so let's go back to this battle 
for what is effect, well, basically seventh spot because Rodriguez he's just clearing away a little bit from this from this battle now. And they're now heading down towards, of course, Brother Nelson used to be called the S, but of course when they re when they reprofiled and modified and extended the circuit back, I think it was 2010 that they did that. And, uh, of course. Of course, that was in the winter of 2010 to, have to host its first races in 2011. So, doing here, of course, they renamed all the corners. Of course, well, most of them, in fact, because of course, they kept the names of like Richie's and Bombhole and, and Corum. Of course, they renamed quite a few corners. The, all the corners on the infield mostly take names from famous personalities, personalities of motorsport. So, you've got, looking at the track map, if you look at them, you have corners under the, under the names of the likes of Agostini and Hamilton and Williams and. Uh, for some reason, one's called Oggy, which I don't know exactly sure what that means. But and also Palmer as well, of course, named after Jonathan Palmer. Of course, he looks after MSV, that looks after tracks like Snetterton and Brands Hatch and Cavill Park and Alton Park and also Bedford Autodrome. So, as a, under the collective MSV. So, ah, look at that uh, from the knowledge from Scott in London every day. I didn't realise he had Bedford underneath him as well. Yeah, it, that's it, very it, good. It, just just yeah. rattled them off there, Scott, didn't he? Well, of course, hey, what's what's he, he been he, doing? He, well, well, of course, Palmer Sport is affected. That's where Palmer Sport bases. Oh, hack. hack. Off oh, in the background, he's, he's out, trying to get he's past Survey. With Adams. Oh, this is all oh, oh, the Survey's on the grass. Saying, oh, right. you're going to give it a car width there, Scott. You can't give less of the car's width. And uh, yeah. Tolbog making his feelings very much clear because he did not like that move at all from Survey. Somehow, how has Survey come out ahead of all that? That was a little bit pedestrian from Hack going into the uh, into Bundle and, and uh, Nelson. And Tolbog's going to run. Tolbog is going to slip straight through, isn't he? Yes, he's done it. There he goes. It's now into, into the top Oh, no, he's hit ten. the curb and run right Ooh. wide. And Hack says, oh, I'm back once again. Great racing between these guys. As small mistakes are punished immediately. Eric Strana has just gone to the final lap. He's got a 4.3 second advantage over Toby Davis. As he heads into... Uh, it's 4.4 now as they head on to the final lap. And Davis chasing for second. So that'll be a good solid on the points. Battle of the third is going to be right down to the wire because Butch has now got Larrison all over his back bumper through Riches and down towards the Montreal Airfield for the final time. Keith is in the background in fifth position. Nothing he can really do. Larrison trying to make a move. He does some more Morse code in the back and actually push Butcher wide up a bit too deep into the Montreal Airfield onto the Bentley straight for the final time. Butcher, can he hold on for a podium? Can Larrison get another podium for Precision Motorsports? And of course, remember, if these two have fireworks for this final half of a lap, it's going to be advantage Keithy because, of course, he's right there in fifth. So these guys have to be very careful. They don't come to blows too oh, much. Rodriguez has been caught Down. well up by Salo. Indeed. Over either. I thought Rodriguez had cleared away, but clearly not. Butcher just covering through Brundle and Nelson. Onto the short shoot down towards the bomb hole. And we'll hold on to it for a moment. But, of course, we have to look to the front because this man, of course, he's been in form. In TPS, he is probably the uh, MVP of Tier for the lot. And look at this coming through. It's going to be another race victory, Ryan. And I think thoroughly well deserved. Stunning victory from Eric Strahan. Went out, got the pole position by it with a fantastic lap. Just conceded the lead to Chris Butcher early on. Was intelligent, waited for his, his opportunity, went through, and has won his third race of the season in the Turing Pro oh. the Thomas O'Call Clio series. And also, um, he has now taken six podiums in the last seven races in the TPS as Toby Davis finishes in second spot with Butcher, Lawrence and Keithy, Rodriguez, Salo, Adam, Cervic, Torborg, Hack, as quick as you like. Torborg just stuck ahead of there of Hack at the line. He did. And Amaral 12th, 13th with Palmer, 14th Hughes, 15th Mike Bell, 16th going to be Nick Hughes, 17th JRG, 18th is Robert Powell. With Brewster in 19th, he'd be very happy with that. A top 20 for him. Thomas Demelin there in 20th spot. With 21st at uh, John Monroe. At 21st, sorry, Ch Thomas Jacobs. With a very damaged, the sixth axis racing car. Oh, hello. He <laughs> wants to drill the back of Thomas Demelin on, on the slowing down lap as well. John Monroe in 22nd spot, also very damaged. 23rd spot there goes to David Carter. 24th uh. spot. He's got to go to Matt Emmons as well. Who didn't well, fifth here is I'm Andy Bernard. There's all kinds yeah, of I've cars spot, kind of, yeah, isn't I've there? just spotted something because those two just they were just in front of Strana as he crossed the line. And it looks like those two have had a bit of a last lap coming together because Bernard was across the grass. Emmons was is limping towards the, the end of the race, but he was just about getting away again. Let me see if I can look at just look at myself. Apologies, apologies if we're not alright. Doesn't seem oh there's bit of damage on Matt Emmons' car, but there's definitely lots of damage on uh, Bernard's car. And Emmons is right, waiting right, so for Bernard. Well, look at this. Emmons is waiting for Bernard. 
to come across no, the line. Crazy. That's so that's So clearly he feels he was at fault for that and lets him yeah. go through. And well Emmons done, takes 25th spot. So that's great sportsmanship there yeah. from, from Matt Emmons. Absolutely. Of course, that's if, great if, it was, stuff. if it was for the win, he may not have been so sporting. Yes. <laughs> I'm joking. He probably well, go on, didn't he then? Finished 26th. What happened there, Scott? Did you catch that? Uh, well, I didn't actually. I saw, he's, a, he's a, right I, I saw an ice cold racing car with damage, but I didn't realise it was Gary Lennon. I didn't, I didn't see that one. He was wow. fairly. He, he was up there challenging within the top 10, wasn't he? But he was. Yeah, you know, just fell right the way back. So that's rather confusing what happened to him. But, uh, yeah, of course, story of the day, of course. Race 2. Eric Strahl taking a brilliant victory. Toby Davis taking as many points as he can. That's 47 important points, of course. He's taken a few points away from. He's, well, let's see, because Jeff Keithy finished fifth, so he would have scored. Away. He's taken eight points away. Now, compared Which to is not enough, really, is it? Because he's, he lost about eight points in the first race. So, uh, probably yeah. a little bit more so than I that, think in fact, actually. So, it's a, it's a long well, shot. Well, how many points? Well, how many points did Keithy score compared to Davis? Because he was 8th, wasn't he? So he, was eighth, no, so, so he scored 35. So he scored 35, and then and Jack finished 2nd, so... So he lost... He 47. Points. So he lost 12, so he lost 4 overall in the end. So that means that yeah. uh, Toby Davis is 81 points behind, and uh, obviously so Torborg were even further behind. So it, it's, it's still, he's still got a very slim chance going... It's possible, isn't it? Kill. It's possible. But, but it needs Jack Keithy just basically not to finish either race. And yes, Toby Davis, remember much. also as well, has to has score to 81 points, and that's no yeah, issue because you have much. to finish uh, in uh, uh, the top five in both races at Knockhill, and anything can happen at that track. So uh, definitely, that's the case there. Yeah, oh, so don't say that. <laughs> right, we'll be right back after this break. Uh, in a couple of minutes' time, we'll have the driver interviews for you guys. You want to find funny? Is that Attention, you have your own. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week.
Game Pod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. Game Pod. Hello and welcome Hello. back to the penultimate round of the Tomos and Cole Cleo series. We've got the driver interviews coming up in just a second's time, but Scott, you wanted a word on some of that action here today. We saw Sarlo take his first ever Tomos and Cole Cleo series win and his second in, the T in his TPS career. And then Eric Strahan, who is, as you were saying, the most, the most viable player at the moment in the Touring Pro series on form alone, take a win in second race. Absolutely, but before I do make some comments, I do believe the screen is still black, Ryan. So you have oh, to screen's still it black. Also. I do apologise. I, I, I did click. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What's wrong? What's right. wrong with black? That's racist, Scott. Never. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I know. Um, no, it's a great racing state. It's Destin always does help provide great racing. Not biased because I, li I live in Norfolk. Anyway, um, but um, yeah, it's fantastic racing state. Sal did a great job to, from pole position. He. No disrespect to Rasmus. He's had, he's been had some difficulties, as we said all broadcast long of. Starting near the front of the grid and then just dropping back to the field, but not being able to keep with the pace of the front runners. But today he today he overcame that and a great drive to hold off uh, second placed Jack Keithy all race. So that was a great drive to get his first clear win. As for Strana, again continuing his form of late with fantastic running in the clears and the V8s with that with that victory. And despite Toby getting to second place. Toby didn't seem to have an answer because Strana just seemed to pull away and just extend that advantage all race. So brilliant victories in both of them. And I'm actually quite keen to, keen to hear uh, their reactions from that race. We've been invaded as we normally are in the commentary booth by all the, by a, a, a horde of drivers. And uh, we'll certainly hear, I guess, from both race winners, I'm guessing, Ryan. Absolutely. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. We'll, uh, we'll leave the championship leader to last. Uh, yes. Rasmus, um, after last week, well, last race, should I say, where you qualified on pole position at Silverstone, and you ended up finishing 17th without an actual, you know, a, a big incident. You just dropped back and plummeted through the field. You really turned that round today. That was uh, impressive stuff in that first race. Um, yeah. Well, before the race at Silverstone, I had basically my my longest run I had done before the race was about five or six laps, so <laughs> that didn't really pay off. But um, this time around, I put more effort into the race race setup and thanks to my teammates it went very well you mentioned your teammates there i mean how how are you enjoying life at thr you're new to the team uh, how is that, how, how has it improved your driving or has it improved your driving maybe you're, you're worse now <laughs> <laughs> well i like to think i i've always known how to drive but you know um getting to do it alongside you know guys like jesper and toby and um well the list is endless basically so it's a it's a good place to be. <laughs> and of course that's your second win in your Touring Pro series career. The last time you won a race was just before you went off to uh, to, to military duty back at, <laughs> at Salzburg ring. So that was a, it's nice to have those two those two now rather than just known as a kind of almost a one hit wonder. You've got those two wins under your belt now. It is, yeah. And well this this win was um it was really tough, you know. Um Jack was <laughs> behind me pretty much always long and I felt he was maybe a bit quicker than me towards the end but um, yeah I managed to keep him behind me Fantastic stuff and of course you now won it two uh, in two very different cars it was the, the <laughs> Holden from the 1980s and now the Clio from 2013 so uh, definitely a versatile racer uh, is Rasmus uh, congratulations Rasmus once again Scott thank you you've got the second race winner Eric Strana and uh, he's hot stuff right now it has to be said Absolutely. Eric, let's just talk about this then. So, I mentioned in the broadcast, you are pretty much at the moment, I think we'd have to agree, Touring Pro Series is uh, equivalent of an MVP because you've had some incredible form in both the V8 Supercars, Virtual V8 Supercars, and in the Tom Osler Cold Clear Series. You've taken, uh, you, you took two podiums, of course, at Oran Park. You then took two victories at, at Silverstone. You were then second at, Oren, second at uh, Sandown at the V8s just a couple of days ago and now you come here and you've had a great run and you've won the second race at Sneston. So I'm guessing really the challenge is, I guess the next question is, can we expect you to win Bathurst? Because you seem to have won everything, done well and everything else so far. 
Well, Bathurst, uh, well, I don't know. It's That's what happens when you have summer holiday and have way too much free time to practice. <laughs> uh, you just get to do way too many laps and fill it with everything you possibly can. And it, it pays out, as we can see here, but uh, I'm not very confident Bathurst because it's after I start school again. So, I don't know. Depends on who I get for co-driver. I still haven't got one, um, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm not too... We'll see. We, we've heard that Jack Keithy is spare, Eric. Sorry to cut across you, Scott, but we've heard that Keithy is spare. Is there, is there truth to these rumours? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's kind of code for a maybe, I think, isn't it? It's, it's, it's some case when, when they say things like that. But uh, moving on to the races today. Race one, you have a, 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 quite a bit of a big battle going on for the around the middle of the top ten. Um, so you had a, lot, a much tougher time trying to get through other cars, but just talk us through that battle, because you were battling mainly with the likes of Tolborg and Chris Hack, and of course a couple of the precision guys, mainly uh, Lauritsen and Kilov. Um, how did you manage to get through all of that without any escape? Because there were some fantastic duels going on between the five of you. Well, I don't know. I think I, I managed to do a horrible qualifying lap, and I think I ended up ninth, which doesn't sound very bad, but considering what I had done in pre-practice, it was pretty poor. And then I completely missed the start and lost about three, four places to turn one. But then, uh, I mean, I, the guys in front of me were battling and that, you know, that helped me. And I just try to play cool and try to not, not overheat the left front tire. And um, yeah, I managed to catch up to Larson, who I was mainly battling with. I couldn't catch uh, Jesper or Hack or um, Simon. But me and uh, Alexander swapped position a couple of times, so that was great fun. We passed each other on the outside, going into turn three, twi uh, four, twice each. So, uh, yeah, that was a great deal of fun. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, now going forward to the final few races, of course, of the season, we've already talked really about Bathurst, of course, and the rumours that you might be doing that with Jack. The immediate next two races, of course, we've got are the, are the penultimate round of the V8s, of course, at Sydney. And then, the, then the final round, of the season finale at Knock Hill. Now, don't, now going by how, what's at stake in the championship, of course, um, are you going to be going out in Knock Hill purely just for your own self-game? Because, of course, really, you're not in, you know, no suspect, but you're not in the championship hunt. But you have come become very strong of late in the past couple of races. So, you know... Are you going to be looking to try and upset the party? Do you think you're going to be looking for a couple, one, maybe both race, maybe getting at least one race victory at Knock Hill? Or are you probably probably going to sit back and allow the likes of Keith Lee and Talborg and Davis to fight it out over the championship? Are you going to be getting in there and, and scrapping amongst them? I'm going to try to get among them. I'm not going to take them out, but I'm, you know, no, I'm no, definitely no, of going to be not. trying to, yeah, I know, but <laughs> I'm definitely going to try to be with them and, you know, try to stir things up, as you said, if I can. It didn't go really very well last season. Uh, I managed to crash and almost wrecked the leaders, but uh, I'll try to do a bit better this year. And yeah, hopefully I'll be able to be up there and try to maybe scratch a win or two. Hopefully Keith Lee and Toby and uh, Jesper will be beating the living crap out of each other. So, and let me through, but We'll see how that goes. I don't think they're that nice to me now. <laughs> well, congratulations on your victory today and, of course, your performance, and best of luck going forward for the rest of the season. Um, Thanks. A quick Ryan, question, sorry, I've got for Eric. Go um, a quick question I've got for Eric, actually. It's a, a bit of an on-the-spot question here for you, Eric. Um, we've seen you obviously have a, a great run at the moment, and you've attributed that to having a bit more time to practice and, and, uh, and whatever. But it's interesting, because in the virtual V8 supercars, you're not in the championship hunt. In the Thomas O'Cole Clio series, you're not in the championship hunt, and that's when the, you know, obviously you've, you've been winning lately in, the, in these kind of series. However, in the virtual <laughs> mini challenge early in the season, you won a race, you suddenly realised, oh, I've got a chance to win this championship here, and results went down. Would you think, do you think you've got a, there's, a, there's something to do with pressure there at all, or would you think it was just purely down to the fact you didn't have quite as much time earlier in the year? I think it's mainly down to the time because now I've basically been doing every, not every single evening, but whenever I can without going too far. And, you know, I could easily do five, six hundred laps if I wanted to, but that's just going to take all the fun out of it, uh, at least from my so point you don't of view. Think, you don't think pressure comes into it at all? It does. I mean, I wasn't finished, but uh, it does in the end. <laughs> it, it, oh, yeah. Told off. <laughs> no, it it does actually. I mean, look at race one in qualifying one. I mean, I was, you know, I was fastest in well, one of the fastest at least in uh, practice, and then I was really confident going into qualifying one, and I was just okay. I'm gonna just go for it and just 
get every single thousand the second I can, and I end up being halfway down the field and not starting well. And then now I was like, okay, just take it easy and try to, you know, try to stroll through the field, and I end up getting pole and winning. So it's definitely pressure. So uh, yeah, it it's pressure combined with time is is like a lot of pressure plus a little bit of time doesn't really work out for me. No, of course not. Sorry, I just wanted to to, to ask that question there because I thought it was interesting the, the timing of this. No, no, this of course. Run. And interesting the time of the run last season also as well. I remember the virtual beat supercars when he came good at the end of last season. So, uh, um, so I know that uh, all too well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> going to move on now to Toby Davis. Toby, we've not heard from you too much. Uh, Lately in the broadcast, things haven't been no. going too well for you of late. He's right. uh, already already sounding grumpy. Um, the championship <laughs> is basically over for you at the moment. I think, in fact, you know, um, you were about eighty-one points behind Jack going into the final round. About of the season. eighty-one. No, okay. About eighty-one, something like that. Yeah. So, um, obviously, there's still a chance there, and obviously, you still keep trying for that. But um, it's a long shot now, isn't it? And it's not really the yeah. way you wanted the season to end. No, and to be honest, it was all Silverstone. I had to do well at Silverstone. I'd done a reasonable amount of practice. I had decent pace, and then my, my throttle pedal was playing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's stuffed me, really. Um, I didn't put much effort into Snetterton, um, which is unusual for me, unlike me. You looked but, uh, underbaked, it has to be said, for the, yeah, the first yeah. race, especially. Yeah, I literally turned up uh, with about half an hour practice, and this is not something I preach, usually, uh, particularly within the team. I, I tell them all off for not doing enough practice, so... Um, uh, yeah, it was my own fault that I qualified so badly and uh, finalised the setup for for race two and had a better race. And I think with a bit of practice, I might have been able to challenge uh, Eric. But he was uh, he was ahead of everyone else today and uh, put him put in a great performance. So uh, uh, very happy for him, and I'm very happy as well for Rasmus because uh, he drove yes. an excellent race in race one, and he's obviously put it in pole um, a couple of races ago or last race at Silverstone. I think he was a pole was, yeah, position yeah. guy. Yep. So. Rasmus has obviously come into the team and been very successful. And it tends to happen with people, actually. They tend to be quite quick, but uh, perhaps a bit flaky. And then they come into the team and it uh, gives them the consistency, gives them the setups. <laughs> and uh, Salo is obviously, team, apparently. Salo is obviously uh, one, of those, uh, one of those excellent drivers and he'll turn out to be a future star, I would say, for THR. Excellent stuff there. So there's a, a, a ringing sound of confidence there from uh, from Toby. In the rest of the season, the Virtual V8 Supergirls, I wanted to quickly ask you, uh, uh, yes. have you finalised your lineups for uh, the co-driving at Bathurst? Yeah, there's a small issue there. We've got uh, about four um, co-drivers, and we need another three or four, but we have got one huge name, and uh, he will be joining us. So You wish to announce please. that as, a, as an exclusive? Yeah, I will. I Is will he Belgian? Wish to announce that. No, no, he's not Belgian. He's not Belgian. Is he... no, because that would be an obvious choice, wouldn't it, Ryan? Yes, it would be a very obvious oh. choice. <laughs> and it wouldn't is be exactly... That... I, think, I think it's fair to say, I think as a, if, if a TPS circle, there's probably only one name that comes to mind with that. And it's, I think he's, it's fair to say he's initially to begin with SV, I think. So Indeed, yes. No, we so. haven't got him, so let's stop... All right. Let's stop talking about... Let's stop talking about Stoffel. It's not him. Come on, come on. Tell me who it is. I'd give you a clue, Ryan. Yes? He's very, very quick. Well, yes, I guess, this <laughs> bit, I guess that bit. That's it. I'll, oh, I'll tell wait, you what, next French? time, next time you interview me, is he French? No. Yeah. Uh, all right, he's from uh, South Europe. South Europe. There you go. So he's Italian. Mm. I'm not, I'm not, this is not so like... And he's David Greco. Is it, what is this, 20 questions David or Greco. <laughs> okay. Fernando David Alonso. Greco. <laughs> Some, someone just suggested Fernando David Taylor. <laughs> that is much, much amusement <laughs> in TPS circles. Anyway... <laughs> 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 you tell that. Toby, go on mute, please. Because you need to go with the, with the driver interview. Well, we've, got to, we've got about five minutes here. Um, well, Fernando, uh, Scott, who did you want to talk to? Jack, well, was, was, we need to talk well, to Jack. Quick, we need to talk well, to Jack. <laughs> yes, well, quick, quick, I was going to say, Fernando was looking for a new car, I suppose. So I guess that could be it, THR, <laughs> THR Commodore. Who knows? Anyway, uh, challenge you to Jack Keith then. Jack, uh, second place and then a fifth as well. Effectively, you've kind of consolidated your championship lead. It uh, really, no, no pressure, but it... It uh, it all kind of rests on you going to not kill really, doesn't it? Because all you've got to do is is make sure you well, if, if uh, you've got to score at least thirty more points uh, over the well, effectively, all you've got to do is just score points really, and uh, and that's it. You've got the championship. So uh, no so pressure. That was clear as mud there from from Scott there, Jack. Is what you need to do when you're going forward into Knock Hill. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I was trying to get my words out. <laughs> Yes, well, knowing the uh, um, very unpredictable nature of not kill, that's my only wife. If it was any other track, any then other track. I'll be I'll be okay with it, but it's not kill, and ooh, it could uh, get quite hairy there. I hope not. 
I was going to say, um, race one, obviously, you're on the back of you're on the back of uh, Rasmus for quite a while, but of course, it looks like you just you almost settled for a second. You didn't want to take too many risks. I want to ask though, what happened in qualifying for race two? Because you, you were all the way down in in, four, in 14th on the grid alongside Rasmus. Were you held up? Was there a mistake or so? What happened that caused you to be so far down the grid? Um, well, I just uh, messed up in qualifying. <laughs> just last corner, I was on two wheels, and that lost me a lot of time, which I uh, wasn't happy about, but then I realised I've got to do some work for once. And and <clears throat> work you did, and uh, it was definitely uh, a great drive through. Of course, one of the, the ways in which you managed to get through was uh, Simon Kilov's engine blew, unfortunately. Was that a bit of a surprise? Or was that a bit of a worry for yourself? Because it looks like possibly Simon might have put a few a few thousand revs extra than he should have done through the engine, it looks like. Well, was that the case? Uh, well, I actually did hear some very high revving when I was coming breaking for the hairpin. I was thinking, what, what was that? And, yeah, it's Simon. I went, oh, God, great. Well, it was great for you. You picked up another position there, Jack, so uh, that was good stuff. Yeah, but, oh, well, yeah, yes and no. Just on the subject of um, precision as a whole at the moment, we actually got the virtual V8 supercars um, and Jeffrey Rietveld and your opinion on that situation. Oh, everyone's asking me. Well, well we're asking you officially. I was going to say I'm not entirely out. happy with it at the moment, and uh, yeah, there will be some talking to certainly once the season is probably wrapped up. Because, of course, it is a second time as well in, in, uh, in the TPS. He's just left just because he doesn't want to race anymore. doesn't let anybody know, just leaves. I mean, and, and as a team manager, you can't be happy about that. Because it's not just the fact that, obviously, that driver is competing for anymore. It's uh, obviously it's, it's a, it's a bad image for precision also. Of course. I mean, I, I, I went on the, the Facebook page on, on the day of the race, and I, I noticed, oh, the V8s are on, and I'll see, I'll see how Jeffrey's doing. And uh, he wasn't on there at all. And yeah, I was I was pretty mad, and and he just told he told me basically he's just given up, and I was thinking someone with that sort of talent and capability, and that happens, and yeah, not not good, not good at all, and uh, don't win races, uh, win championships by uh, by giving up, unfortunately. But that he did, and it's very unfortunate for the Virtual V Supercars as a whole as well, of course, because that was turning into a fantastic uh, championship fight with plenty of twists and, and turns into it. But um, it seems to have handed it to Jesper Torborg now. Um, so it's a shame, really it is. Uh, so there's the official word there from Precision on, uh, on their driver. Uh, we're going to wrap up this show now. Thank you for talking to us, guys. Sorry we're going to get through too many uh, uh, driver interviews there. We're a bit for tight for time. Uh, join us again in the Touring Pro Series in around about uh, 10 days' time. In fact, exactly 10 days' time on the 10th of August. Uh, on Saturday, Saturday early evening, you'll be able to tune in to the penultimate round, as we were saying, of the Virtual Vic Supercars from Sydney Park. Like we said before also as well, Sydney Park always throws up fantastic storylines and races. It's always fantastic to watch that race there, especially the race as a whole. It always unfolds. It's always a surprise. And it's such an easy track to make a mistake on as well. And I'm looking forward to commentating on that uh, with Danny Asbury in 10, di 10, in ten dies time. <laughs> Coming up uh, in, the in, the, in the Thomas Cole series, end of the season, of course, in two weeks' time, we have, as you see in the calendar there, at the bottom there, is the finale of the championship where we'll head to Knock Hill, of course. Jack Keithy, a bit of a, uh, only has to turn up and score a few points really to win the championship, but that does not mean it's over at all because anything can happen at Knock Hill. Anything at all. And that is a, it's kind of track that you do not want as your championship finale, but that is the way it is. And um, we're looking forward to that also. Make sure to tune in at the same time in two weeks' time for that Knock Hill event. Until then, thank you for watching. Thank you all drivers for entertaining us and take it easy.
Oh, look at this.